Hello, MIFV Max, and welcome to, I guess you could say, episode 14 of our Patreon exclusive, well, mostly Patreon exclusive show. We've, I've got a, quite a show for you tonight. In fact, I, we're going to be discussing the new Netflix troll movie with a pair of trolls <laughs> that I call my friends Danny, Damana, and Michael. Oh, Nate's favorite. Oh, I see how this works. <laughs> Michael! Danny! How are you doing, sir? Going? Man, it's, it's, going, so good. it's going good. It's, it's good yeah. to see you, man. The nice delayed time. reaction there. I'm just Great saying. to what you see been up you, to? too, Michael. I love the background, by the way. My Thank time. you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, for, uh, um, for, I mean, those, who are, for those who are myself. listening. So what I have absolutely. you been up to, Danny? <laughs> I've been up to, man, I've been up to, gosh, what haven't I been up to? I was just on um, with the, the Monster Report uh, not too long ago. Oh, okay. How about about um, Kazuki Omori. May he rest in peace. I've been May rest in work, peace. Try, may, I've been trying to get that um, Terror of Mechagodzilla story that I mentioned. Trying to get that done. Also, it's the holidays. Oh, 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 oh. Speaking speaking of Mechagodzilla, did I show you that I got this and they did I I got the little I got Whoa. the little Bandai I got the little Bandai thing. See here, hang on. Hang I on. love it. Since we're, since we're live, I will show you what it does. Hang on. Oh, I got to see this. I okay. wish Nate were here to see this. He would he'd probably really appreciate this. Okay, so the head. You guys forget, I have ultimate power here. <laughs> How long are we going to waste time? <laughs> are you going to behave? You got us. <laughs> so anyway, man, that's a cool toy, Michael. Yeah, it, it is, is a, a cool, cool toy. See, look, yeah. at, it is a cool toy. Seriously. But, oh, did I also, Danny, did I also show you that I got this really cool challenge coin in the mail the other day? You, you know, I that? did see that. And my gosh, again, I wish Nate was here. He'd probably really appreciate it. Anyway, Michael, you and I are. <laughs> how long are we going to do this trolls <laughs> do you need the funny hair <laughs> are we talking about those trolls tonight huh huh so anyway we're here to talk about troll michael you and i let's do this troll. yeah we're here to talk yeah. about well old danny boy it's good to see you, old boy. <laughs> good to see you old yes. Friend. yes 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 indeed. And this is live um very much this live, is live yes. for all the for all the internet to see yes 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 quite. to see and to hear and of course it would in fact be a crime to mention uh, not to mention in fact that mr Nathan Marchand could not make it to his own stream tonight. Um, very, yes, very, yeah. um, oh, it's well. just totally and completely. How long are we going to play this game? <laughs> Seriously, guys, how long are we playing the game? <laughs> I don't know. You got to mute me to ask the question uh, for me to be able to answer it. Uh, apparently. Yeah. Danny, Dan Danny, how long are we going to play the game for? I think we should probably cut him some slack. <laughs> oh, well, okay. That's fine. Just kidding. Michael, tell me about your background. Who's the oh, my background lady? is wonderful. Say, so, like, this is Divatox. This is one of the best Power Rangers villains in history. Uh, it, it, one it's of the, Michael's wife. We get one it. Of the most, one of the most bust. I would say the bustiest Power Rangers villain in history. If Whoa. It's me. Whoa. Like, I mean... I mean, they call her, they don't call her Boobatox for nothing, you know? Whoa. 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 Did you hear something there? I thought I heard something there. Something I don't know. Like I that. heard like a really little wet trombone or something. I don't know. It's wet trombone. So this is the, this is how we're doing it here. Okay. Okay. Are we done yet? <laughs> How long do you guys want to stream? Because I got all the time in the world, especially after last night when Michael and I were up, may have been up until 2.30 recording Power Trip. <laughs> 30? That's that's rather um that's really that's rather late. late that is rather that is late and i was late, rather sir. and i had an i had an 8 30 meeting this morning i was rather tired to be honest <laughs> with you well, that's i don't good. know if you danny have you, have you ever had to get up that early for a meeting uh yes not at the job i'm at now um but mm -hmm. i've well, i mean nine i've had nine o'clock meetings i never had an 8 30 meeting not at this job now yeah, that I you was... mentioned that though i'm gonna have to find some wood to knock on because i ain't messing around <laughs> yes yes i don't i i'll go to the 8 30 meeting but i'd, I'd really rather not that is awful. hey at early. least they provided at least they had coffee and donuts when i walked into the uh hey. when i walked into the co-working space so that's yes that's, always that's, nice. that's good that's wait good. isn't it virtual though or did you actually have a physical location for this meeting? No, he ate virtual donuts. Nathan. I was going to say, were these donuts. virtual donuts? Yep. I ate yep. virtual donuts 
and I drank virtual coffee that <laughs> like you do. I did make <laughs> like, myself yeah. as yeah. you do. Uh, as you do. No, I had a I had an out of the I had an out of the house meeting today, Marchand. Jesus. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> Jeez. Troll. Troll. Yeah. That's yeah. Before this turns into a fight. <laughs> yeah. I, listen, you guys can bicker all you want. I'm here. Listen, I'm literally in between you two right now. For the listeners, I'm literally <laughs> we have a uh, Danny sandwich. Danny sandwich. That listen, sounds a little pre- wrong. No, no, no. I appreciate the thought, Michael, but if you ever say that again, <laughs> ever, um, I'll probably do very little about it. Dan, uh, you're just you're you're just my little marshmallow puff, is what you are. Oh, uh, I'm the cream in the little Oreo. Very nice. <laughs> you're the cream in the little Oreo. Yes, you're the very qu- nice. You're you're the queen. You're the cream. In the, the, the queen. The queen He's the what queen. You, what? I'm the queen. Listen, He's I can't killer. be the kaiju queen. Dude, there's already a kaiju queen. I can't be the kaiju queen. No, there are yeah, various this reasons. True. This, this is, is true. true. It's copyright. Copyright. Yeah, Kim, Kim has it trademarked, man, and copyright. It's it's she's got it locked mm-hmm. in. You don't want to cross Kim. You don't want to do it. No, no, no. Mostly no. because she's really nice, and you'd feel bad. But also, mm-hmm. I mean, I just has, don't cross. Uh, the, you got to watch out for the nice ones. <laughs> Speaking of I Kim, guess. she has a really she has she has a she has a way of making you feel bad, like guilty, like because she's so incredibly <laughs> Guys, sweet. Are you are you sure she, you should be defaming a fellow content creators like that? <laughs> We're not. We're just. I'm just saying that Kim is so incredibly sweet that if you say anything cross to her, she makes you feel bad for it instantly. She's. I've. I've never had that happen because I'm only ever nice to Kim. Yeah. Can we just talk about how awesome Kim is instead of talking about? Trouble? Welcome to all, Kim is awesome cast. <laughs> I mean, before we move on, maybe we honestly we should honestly throw out there that she's going to be doing a uh, charity live stream and everyone should check it out. Yes, that you should. That's worth mentioning. Yes. that's worth mentioning. Yes, yeah, and we're all going to be oh, on oh, it. Oh. Yes, and we are. All, and for better or for worse, we are. Well, yeah. for us, better or for worse, know. sir, it's it not. is an honor to stream with Kim. <laughs> this is true. This I'm is true. not talking about Kim, sir. Um, <laughs> so troll, <laughs> so won't you? Troll, troll. yes. Uh, speaking of trolls, yeah. yeah. I, 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 this has all just been one very <laughs> elaborate internet joke. When I was going to make an internet troll joke later, nice job, fellas. <laughs> but we 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 managed to pull it off without you having to provide the context to anyone. We ah. were the trolls, so you didn't have to explain it. It's showing, mm-hmm. not telling. It's right. all part of the. It's all part of the troll. The, the, the it's all that is part the of the. It's all part of the live streaming mystique. This uh, is true. This is true. AKA, it's locked in, and you can't do a dang thing about it. No, I right. can't. No, I can't. <laughs> the the <laughs> best you can do is mute us, and you won't do that because you <laughs> require our services for content. <laughs> oh, <It's> true. <laughs> Who, who the heck else I mean, are you going to like, feel it, uh, superior to? I mean, it's, like, you have to I mean, it's not like you It's not like you actually sit around and talk to yourself all day. Wait. Hang on. <laughs> it's the best conversations I ever, I usually have. Nice job, fellas. Not surprised. Anyway, so. <laughs> okay. So did troll. You get, did, did you actually get um, PowerPoint to function while streaming? Yes. Congratulations. Well, I, I, mean, I, under, I'm not, I'm not I just know not to get fancy with it. <laughs> That's yes. the that's really what not, it boils down at least, to. At least at like least you're not using screen. at least you're not using highlighter green up against a highlighter yellow background so we can actually read it this time. Yes. I, I was uh, like I said, during that uh, during that live stream I wasn't happy with how that PowerPoint turned out. A but, uh, <laughs> a artist you are not, sir. Well, it also it was also that his stream yard was being weird with how it processes powerpoints mm-hmm. it looked better blame it on, when blame i it, it on looked yard. better when blame i on my on computer <laughs> oh, troll. anyway you know so troll, <laughs> troll. Right. so this was right, uh, what what do you you know i'm gonna back up to the first slide here but this was actually a movie that was I remember hearing about it on Kaiju uh, Kaiju News Outlet, like, what, about a year ago? Must have Something, been. Like, Something that. like that. More yeah. like yeah. more yeah. than a year ago. And I honestly didn't know what to think of it. I remember Troll Hunter, so we had another Norwegian Kaiju movie that, you know, based around trolls. So... I, I, I wasn't... Re- so, like I said, I wasn't really thinking much of it. And then 
as it got closer to its release date, suddenly people were talking about it a little bit more, and it actually looked more like a kaiju film than Troll Hunter. <laughs> I like and Troll we, Hunter, but <laughs> Troll Hunter is amazing. Troll yeah. Hunter. Anybody out there listening who's not seen Troll Hunter, I'm 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 not kidding. Like go. What it used to be on Netflix, it might still be there. I don't think it's so. not. It's on Tubi. It's okay, I think it's, get, I think it's yeah, still on Tubi. It's on Tubi. Go get the dang Blu-ray. You can probably find it on Amazon for five bucks now. It's a it's twelve cheap, year old film. Me. It's well, worth let's owning. Do it. It's well, sorry. let's do a quick little Google search, and I'll tell you. There you go. Let me. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, while you, you do that, there, yeah. While you do that, know. we'll uh, we'll chat this up a little bit more. But sure. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure Michael hates Troll Hunter though because it's found footage, and he just hates found footage. It's true. I do hate found footage. Ooh. Uh, have you have you seen Troll Hunter, Michael? I have seen Troll Hunter. I think Troll Hunter is good. There oh, go. what the heck! But anyway, another reason I wanted to do this is for one, I wanted to be a little timely <laughs> because this mm-hmm. just came out, and I feel like this is a good warm up to season four of MIFV because it will be the Monster Island World Tour, and Troll Hunter is on the docket for that season. Synergy. You can buy you can buy Troll Hunter on Blu-ray for twelve dollars and fifty two cents. Mm. You can buy the DVD for eight dollars and twenty cents. Well, it's worth it. Go. It's worth it. I'm not it's, sure. It's great. I'm not sure how that. Uh, I'm not sure how that equates to um, Monster Island money, but in U.S. <laughs> dollars, that that is that is pretty darn cheap. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth it. What kind of currency is on Monster Island? I've never. Do that you, is a good question. I, have, you it, it, I don't. I, I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead, and I'm not in character. I mean, <laughs> I am at Monster and you live there. Jeez, come on. I'm not in which, character, sir. Which Nate are we talking to? You're My talking goodness. to real Nate. Look at the name. <laughs> uh, oh, he came prepared. Uh, okay. He didn't come prepared. <laughs> Just so we know which of the fourteen and a half Nates we were talking to. I, I like the. I like the preparedness. I never do. Oh. I never do the the max least, episodes in character. <laughs> at least we're we at least we're not going to have Jimmy show up randomly. Uh, no, besides no, even, even if this was in character, he's still locked up. So, <laughs> oh yeah, it's kind of you know what it reminds oh, yeah. me of. It reminds me of the. Uh, the old uh, Dark Shadows episodes where a cast member would have to go shoot a movie so they'd lock them in a coffin for like two weeks because it was a <laughs> weekly show, yeah. a daily show every week, and uh, they would lock them up in a coffin just so they could go shoot their movie or shoot their commercial or go to a convention, and then they'd unchain them from the coffin <laughs> when they came back. That's what Jimmy's... Jimmy's off shooting a movie right now. And, or something uh, he, like uh, that. He has to be locked up in order for him to... Like in character, he has to be locked up on the show in order for him to go gallivanting elsewhere. Right, right. Yes. But anyway, you know, what it reminds me, you know what it reminds me of, Danny? What? Genghis Rex. <laughs> Genghis Rex. <laughs> oh yeah, there he it, is. They, that back, episode's everyone. coming. Okay, calm the heck down. But anyway, so I, like I said, nobody really talked about this until the movie actually started. Uh, well, I actually got close to being uh, to being released. Now, I got to say, I looked up the cast and crew for this thing, and this guy might have the perfect name to direct a kaiju movie. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew. Because mm-hmm. it's true. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Roar it true, Uthog. And plus, we've heard it all week. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, Actually, you know, I'm not. It's is either it? Uthog or Uthog, and I'm not yeah, sure I've, which. Uthog. I'm not sure either. Uh, if, if I may paraphrase a certain... Uh, famous reporter that we're all very familiar with my norwegian is a little rusty uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. yes yes so i i'm not entirely sure how it is said i've heard it said multiple ways and so i'm going to tread carefully so as not to accidentally uh offend people say, yeah. you say it so, wrong i don't want i don't say it wrong. so should we just call him roar for the rest of the stream <laughs> call him uh, roar son that, that, that makes yeah. sense yeah, because that now, we'll just call sense. him we'll call him mr roar and um i, I do like that his parents thought uh, thought to name him after the Cloverfield Overture. That was very forward thinking. <laughs> they, they they looked in their crystal ball and <laughs> they knew. They just knew. knew. This dude. This dude has a. He him. hasn't directed a lot, but his pedigree is pretty pretty solid. Yeah, I um, looked up his filmography. It's a lot of foreign films that I've not heard of. However, he did direct the 2018 Tomb Raider. He did. So he's got mm-hmm. one Hollywood movie under his belt. Yeah. I've I've heard that that is a movie. Hmm. Yeah, I actually haven't seen the 2018 Tomb Raider. I I haven't either, so... (laughs) I'm behind. I have. It's awful. (laughs) 
<laughs> there you go. That doesn't bode well. Uh, screen uh, the 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 screenplay was written by Espen. Uh, let, let's just prepare ourselves to butcher these names. Espen Aachen. Aachen. Sure. Aachen. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Espen. Yeah, I. I'm I really not, liked your movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure who this is. And then our co- composer was Johan Ringen. Ringen? Again, we're going to butcher Close these enough. names. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Sorry, uh, production Johan. company was Motion Motion Blur. Mo- yeah. Motion Blur. 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 Which is probably the most Norwegian name on this list, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's true. It is. Although <laughs> I, they've done a lot of other... I, th- I thought they did special effects work, to be honest. I've heard their they, names and they, connected to other things. They do. They do um, digital. I think, don't quote me on this. I don't have it in front of me, but they, I think they do digital work mm-hmm. in general. Like they, they do digital filmmaking work. Mm-hmm. So they might do. My gosh, I think they, I think they also do like opening credits to films as well. I'm not right. of someone else. It's something like that. Right. Which is why I'm a little bit confused on this because I am trying. It's been a week since I watched the movie, but I was trying to remember who else was mentioned at the beginning because I'm trying to figure out if Netflix funded this or if. <laughs> what do you got going on there, Michael? Uh, oh, heard, don't oh, don't mind him. I thought I heard He's something a, ringing, I'm, but anyway. I'm, are you having BTSD, sir? Mm-hmm. From the ringing, you know the ting, 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 ting. Something like that. Okay. Anyway, From the Yeti, the Yeti episode. Oh, Give it the program. <laughs> oh, PTSD. I thought you said BTSD. I was confused. Why would Why would I say BTSD? I, that's what I was trying to figure Slippery out. Slippery slope, gentlemen. Slippery yeah. slope. Yeah, anyway. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So Netflix definitely I th- distributed. I, yeah, the they're film. the Motion, distributor, yeah. but I don't. Rem- but when the movie was first announced, when they, there was no mention of Netflix. Netflix no, came I, later. From what I understand, and again, um, feel free, world, to correct me if I am a mistaken. But uh, I believe that Motion Blur, the main studio behind this, produced the film. And the reason we heard about it a year ago, aside from just them announcing it, was that they were probably looking for digital distribution and for, you know, various reasons. Um, Netflix happened to be the, per- the the entity that jumped on. And I imagine they did throw some funding at it, probably mostly for promotion and pu- uh, publicity, marketing mm-hmm. stuff. But uh, I don't know the numbers on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't know the numbers on that, but um, it's, it's, it is an interest. It's interesting. And I'm glad it found distribution outside of its home country because we're, you know, that stuff's more common now, but, you know, a lot of films like this, foreign made, at least from our perspective, foreign made giant monster movies, it's it, it, it kind of feels like a luxury when these things get big releases outside mm-hmm. of their, their countries. I mean, we're, you know, coming up here on how, however many months since uh, Shin Ultraman released in Japan, and we're not getting it till at the time of this recording next month in January. January. We're dating the episode. But it's yeah, fine. yeah, we, uh, yeah, we are. But it, even that, I'm going to tell you right now, the, the distribution is not quite to the extent that I thought it was going to be, but that's a topic for another day. So, mm-hmm. I, like I said, I'm just glad to see this. I'm glad to see more kaiju films coming out of places other than Japan and America. That is really nice to see. Hence why I'm doing a whole season dedicated to kaiju films from other parts of the world. Thou art doing the Lord's work, sir. Yes, yeah. indeedeth. So here's yes. our cast here really quick. Again, going to bit butcher, butcher the names. How do you say it? This is our star here. Is it Ine? Ine Marie I, Willman? I, I don't know, sir. Let's just call her Miss Wilman. Miss Wilman, I, yeah. I, I don't want to actually say it wrong by accident. I know, but, I, but, I'm, uh, but looking at this list, we got some other uh, we got some other very Norwegian-sounding names coming up. We have Kim Falk, Mads, Shogard, Shogard, yeah, Pedersen, Gard hmm. B. Eidsvold. That's a that's an L O T R name. Right there. Yeah, it, it does name. look like an LOTR name. Paul Pat- Richard Lunderby? Lunderby? Lunderby. Lunderby? Lunderby. Lunderby. Mr. Lunderby. Mr. Lunderby. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Then, Lunderby. And then, and then Eric Voldemort. 
<laughs> we do not speak Vor- his name, Mr. Hamilton. Vorenholt, but yeah. <laughs> Eric Voren- Vorenholt. Vorenholt. Listen, uh, dear dear Norway, um, two things. One, we're very sorry for saying your names wrong. And two, you guys have awesome names. Yes, Holy you do. <laughs> That's an entire country of awesome sounding names. Yeah, for so, sure, uh, for sure. Yeah, there you go. So who wants to do the epic plot synopsis if I planned... Uh, uh, if I promise in the podcast version to <laughs> slip in some epic music, <laughs> uh, what do you what do you think? Best fight, Michael. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let, uh, let's in true Danny in my fashion. Let's play. Let's play rock paper scissors. <laughs> okay, best right, out good. of three. Okay, great ready? podcasting, right? This here. Makes for great radio. Here we go. Yes, rock, rock what? paper scissors <laughs> shoot. Gosh darn it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're both scissors both scissors okay. no. yeah we're scissoring each other yeah yeah oh, rock, paper, <laughs> rock, 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 paper scissors shoot uh you paper i think you papered me papered i papered you okay, okay. so okay. that's 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 one that's one that's one nothing okay we're doing rock, best to edit rock, paper, paper scissors scissors oh, shoot, shoot. Now rock, you God. did you see rock. my scissors before I No, I didn't see it. Did you see my rock before your scissors so that you, you win, don't have sir. to read this thing? You, All right, you, fine. you win, sir. Go for it. All right, fine, 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 fine. <laughs> On a B tier podcast, three friends get together and talk about a movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow how long will it take for mr marchand to mention his master's degree <laughs> there it is the world may never know okay no, nope, okay, they'll no. totally know because he no, won't keep it to himself totally alone know. okay all right. for real go, go ahead all right, all right. <clears throat> giant monster sightings in norwegian mountains prompt the government to call in a paleonto- paleontologist nora Tide paleobiologist <laughs> Shut up, Marchand. She goes in her. She goes to her strange father and a seemingly mad folklorist for help after it's discovered that the creature is a troll, much like Marchand. As <laughs> father and daughter reconnect and reconcile, they find themselves not only in the path of the rampaging kaiju, technically not a kaiju, but embroiled in an in a centuries old uh, count in a centuries old cover up by the Norwegian government. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. All right, explain troll, yourself. Troll, troll. I need. I, how is the troll not a kaiju? <laughs> it's just it's not a kaiju because it's not from Japan. We all know that kaiju can only be from Japan. Shut Ooh. up, Elijah. Which means, which makes legendary Godzilla not really a kaiju. Wow, Elijah. Wow. Wow. I know a lot of uh, uh, people on Twitter who are going to be very happy to hear you say that, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Invalidating the the uh, Western Godzilla films, which is kind of which is kind of funny the, because I would uh, make the argument that this might be a secret monster first movie. No, let me let me correct let, let me let me let me correct and clarify myself. Go for um, it. Wow, he went full tilt West Virginian there. <laughs> well, it's more like there to the Tennessee. Um, but uh, I do believe that this is a kaiju film. And I'm going to beat you to it before you say anything at all, Marchand. I believe this fits. This would fit so incredibly well in with the MonsterVerse because it is Godzilla 2014 and Skull Island rolled into one film. You know, it's funny that you say that because I mentioned that on a YouTube comment for Omni viewers review of this movie. And I got some clap back. <laughs> for you got the clap? That. That's what I heard. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. He didn't say no. He didn't say no. <laughs> he didn't say no. <laughs> um, wow. Lord have mercy. Yes, <clears throat> have mercy. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, I, I'll, I'll jump on top of uh, that sentence from Mr. Michael because I agree. I think this movie could totally fit. It has the mythic ancient uh creatures thing going on it has i mean just in terms of the plot it feels like it could fit it has the you know the government going after the monsters it has a very kind of grounded realistic feeling there's a reliance on kind of having to believe that that these things 
fit within the folklore that that surround them as bizarre as it is and like they really really stick with it we'll get more into that as we go along and also just from a filmmaking perspective and again we'll get more into this as we go along it is obvious that mr roar can i call you mr roar mr roar really really um studied kong skull island in particular frame by frame good lord uh, did he this film that's why uh, that's why uh for those who are uh, who are listening to this I, I have a, a screenshot here from f- probably the most Skull Island-esque scene in the entire movie, which is the troll fighting helicopters and, like, everything just screams uh, the, Skull Island. Yeah, the, the especially, the like, the, the see-through, like, the, the you're, as you're uh, looking through the helicopter pan shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like that's that's very much that's very much the introduction of Kong and Kong Skull Island. Right. I mean, even the design of this troll, I kind of wonder if it was. I mean, obviously, it's borrowing from the folkloric, and because I did some research on the folkloric trolls from Norway, because because between this and Troll Hunter, like they're mentioning things like in these things that are that. They just expect the audience to know. So I'm like, this has got to, there's got to be something to this. So there's definitely some of that tradition in this, but like the, the body type, the body shape, it's almost like they knew that they were going to have sequences like this and they wanted him to look like Kong. He's got the shoulders. He's got the, uh, the stance again. Uh, this is, this makes for great radio, but the picture we're looking at right now, he's kind of, He's standing up straight, but the, the troll is standing up straight, but he's kind of bent forward. His his shoulders are up and they're kind of kind of they kind of out. His arms are kind of out a little bit. His hands are wide open and he's just staring down that helicopter. And um, I wish I could grow a beard like that, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this guy's got some enviable facial hair. No, I was gonna, uh, yeah. The, uh, this troll does have some. Uh, have some epic facial hair. Not too many kaiju can lay claim to facial hair. I'm just saying. <laughs> Him and Kong, more Kong connections. Um, because Kong has the beard most yes, he recently. Does. He's got a he's sporting a nice beard on him. But uh, has, yeah, uh, it's, it's great. His it's green kind of like coloring kind of reminds me of Gyra. You know, uh, you, know you know, I can see it. He's kind of got that mossiness um mm-hmm. going on. It's, it's like if you took Gyra and kind of a traditional depiction of a troll and a mountain and just kind of threw them all into a right, blender. Right, right. And there is also a scene where, just like in Skull Island, where the troll drops a guy into his mouth. That, yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he swats away at fire at one point, like the um, the, the Packard attack scene from Skull Island. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a couple of close-ups of his eyes, or at least one eye, much like the poster, that v- are very much like the uh, the multiple close-ups we get of Kong's face and his, his eyes mm-hmm. in that film. A lot of the mm-hmm. emotional connection that we do eventually and this is yeah. out a little we feel with the troll you feel through the eyes just like with kong mm-hmm. because there's something very human about both creatures about the and eyes. so mm-hmm. we focus on the eyes mm-hmm. uh, the gateway eyes. to the soul as they say yeah Those i was actually mm-hmm. i was actually They're not expecting eyes. well actually i take it back i was kind of wondering the troll if- go away sometimes the troll don't go away <laughs> I was actually kind of wondering. Well, and do do anyway. Sorry, I was <laughs> actually kind of Charles wondering if the troll was going to be sympathetic. Me way to go home. Bum bum bum. I'm tired and I'm tired I want and I want to go to bed. <laughs> I had a little drink of a uh, drink about an hour ago. He's gonna kill us. You know this, right, Michael? <laughs> he's, gonna, he's going to troll us again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I earned that. Go, it go needed, uh, in my defense, it you start you started it, and I had to finish it. This is no, no. This is this was a two part uh, joke. This it needed help, and you were the man to do it. Thank All you. right, no, go ahead, Nate. <laughs> go ahead. Well, no, but but continuing with the Kong connections, I for one thing, you don't see the troll for a little while, but then they, I start. Even I was picking up on how the the roar of the troll sounded kind of mournful and then the characters were pointing it out and then we find out that he is a sympathetic character which does actually go a little bit counter to troll folklore so even though this movie much like a monster verse film is taking actual folklore and taking a natural uh, putting a naturalistic spin on it it's also saying the stories weren't entirely accurate <laughs> which is kind of interesting it's like a it's like a mixture. I'd say according to this film's mythology, troll 
uh, mythology is probably like 80, 75, 80 percent on the nose. Uh, this thing, you know, it doesn't like it can be outside, but it can't be in direct sunlight or it turns to stone. That's right out of. So folklore. it can be an uh, it can be an overcast. Yeah, because that's be what overcast. I was wondering, too. That's what I was overcast. wondering, too. Like, uh, like it's been walking and they point this out in the movie, like, but it's been daylight the whole time. No, it has to be direct sunlight. And we discover right, yeah. later uh, that when they go to the underground cavern, that when they shine their UV lights on the bones, they burn. Right. So Which is that's how they figure really, that out. A really cool v- v- way that that's communicated visually. So even that adheres to uh, to folklore to mythology and then you have the uh its ability to smell christian blood which has a lot to do with norway's own yeah. real history which is fascinating yeah which uh, so they, they stick to it but weirdly enough that isn't as big of a deal in this as it was in troll hunter oh, nor troll was hunter, it it's a huge deal they have to cover themselves um oh my gosh it's been a minute since i've seen they do have they have I to know. cover themselves in, in urine right I think it's I something it's, like that, and it's like yeah. as soon as the troll, as one of those trolls gets a whiff of it, they just go ballistic. It, it's it urine, or it's the blood of. Um, I think it's blood. Like, actually, it's like it's like blood that's been ordained or something. Or not yeah, ordained, something like it's like been prayed that. over, something like that. So it has. Um, no, it's the opposite. It's like no, the, yeah, the, it would have to be the opposite. It would have to be the opposite. Oh, man, I really need to sit and rewatch Troll Hunter. My gosh, yeah, this actually ki- has kind blood. of been making me want to watch goat's that one blood? again. Goat's blood? I think it's goat's blood. It's been now. Granted, it's been a minute since I watched it, but it, mm-hmm. I think it was goat's blood. Right. Something like um, something something decidedly uh, unchristian <laughs> to yes. cover up the scent of the believers amongst them on the expedition. And they, they don't mm-hmm. do that here, but there there is a a, a moment where a guy who is uh, in this film, where a gentleman who is praying, uh, gets at. Uh, he doesn't get eaten. He gets swiped. But, no, um, he does get eaten. So that's that's, that's, the, guy that's the guy eaten. who gets okay, eaten. That's, the guy, that's gets the guy who gets eaten. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one time they do lean into that part of the lore, which I was a little bit surprised by because, like you, like you guys pointed out, that's a huge plot point in Troll Hunter. Mm-hmm. Where it, mm-hmm. here it's 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 addressed, but it's not the focal point. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. If I remember correctly from Troll Hunter, I think it was just plain daylight that would kill these uh, that would kill the trolls there. Whereas mm-hmm. in this one, it, it has to be direct sunlight. And what's yeah, interesting from, about yeah. troll, what, I, what I'm remembering about Troll Hunter is there's trolls of different sizes yes. in Troll Yeah, Hunter. there's a whole classification system in that right. film where they're like, well, this is this right. kind of troll and it's this big. Or, this is this kind of troll. It lives under bridges. This is this kind of troll. and it lives. So there's a whole, like, the, the actual titular Troll Hunter from the story rattles off all of this uh, troll stuff from a, almost like a little field guide because you, mm-hmm. there, again, a lot of parallels between this film yeah. and but because there we have the same character who's obsessed with the trolls, just like in the last one, you'd almost think that they were connected because they are so similar in a lot of ways because they lean into the folklore, some of the same tropes, and the presentation style is completely different. That yes. film, for anybody who hasn't seen it, is found footage Cloverfield style. Um, actually, to the film's benefit, it's one of the better. Uh, found footage films I've I've seen. Found footage is incredibly hit or miss, at least for me. Yeah, I feel like that's is. one that really that really succeeds by using that. It's one of the better ones. Again, I recommend it. I really recommend that film. But it it's, is weird how similar fun. they are. It's found footage, but it's watchable found footage. I find yes. Troll Hunter infinitely more enjoyable and watchable than Cloverfield. Oh, mm-hmm. you know I've yeah. heard that before. I have a lot of people swear by Troll Hunter, and I'm one of those people. So yeah, go right. see it. Right, but I would still say this movie still manages to be different enough from Troll mm-hmm. Hunter because it, given that it's Norwegian, it's about trolls, it's a giant monster movie, it's e- it, it's very easy to compare the two. Is it well? Is it is it fair to say that this one feels a bit safer? This one feels on the more more on the safe side. I'd say that it breaks less uh, storytelling ground, uh, and, you know, tr- trods, uh, l- you know, more well-beaten paths than uh, Troll Hunter did. Because, again, this film is, uh, you know, I'm trying not to use the word derivative, but I know that's the next bullet point on our list here because this film is like a trope sandwich. It, it really um, is. But, and yeah. so I feel like it is it is in a lot of ways safer because you've seen, I listen, and there are movies where this bugs me. But this is a film where I thought the fresh coat of paint on the tropes really made it a great watch. Uh, this is a film that you've seen before. 
Mm-hmm. You've yeah. seen every, like I predicted it almost every beat of this film as I was watching it. I knew the characters that were going to be funny. I knew the characters that were going to die. I knew like the only thing I didn't, you know, I'm not trying to like brag or anything. Like I, I didn't know the whole movie before I saw it, the ending. And we'll get to that again. I'm not going to jump yeah. ahead. Uh, did surprise me. That how, completely caught me off guard. Uh, how that much of the ending surprised me as well. Yeah. How much of the ending though? Cause well, I, the, well, cause well, there's okay, some, so, uh, there's, there's a unique sequence toward the end with the troll skull on the truck bed. No, that, that I really I liked. Had, I love that. And again, we'll, we'll get there, but um, the, that entire last sequence, I, I didn't, I didn't predict they were going to use the skull again. We'll get there. The, um, the final moment, I'll say that for now until we get there with the troll, well, like the penultimate moment with the troll, I had predicted what was going to happen there, but then the film threw a wrench into what I thought was going to happen. And it was uh, a little upsetting. (laughs) We'll get there. Um, and then the actual cliffhanger cliffhanger at the very, very, very end, uh, I, I kind of figured they were going to do that because in other films, since we're talking about borrowing things, uh, you know, this is this definitely has Godzilla 2014 vibes. It's got a heck of a lot of Kong Skull Island vibes. But my goodness, does this have a lot of unexpectedly Godzilla 1998 vibes? Yes, I've heard uh, yeah. the Omni viewer talked about that, and I don't there know how are, to feel about it. <laughs> no, there are scenes in this that are almost verbatim uh the moment where you have our our main character uh tildeman and she is you know digging something up and then helicopter lands and says we need to bring you to the site of a mysterious attack and they put her on the helicopter and fly her away because they need her expertise as i was watching this and i don't often do this but out loud while i was watching the movie i said but my work here isn't finished (laughs) it is now like it it was very that is that matthew broderick thing where they're like well you're the worm guy and she was the the dinosaur person you know yeah she was a dinosaur girl and um there's a, a moment the moment which is actually very effective in this film where you see the old elderly couple go into the shelter and the mm. house is torn down around them and then you get a, a helicopter shot of the uh the, the footprint basically that has swept through this house and has cleaved it uh, right down the middle and then they follow the footprints to the site of the next disaster. Um, The main characters get inside of a giant footprint. It feels a lot like the opening act of uh, Godzilla 1998. 1998. Uh, The ending is also incredibly reminiscent of it right down to the, eye. I won't say anything yet, but the eye, the, the troll's eye at the, in the last moment, almost the same thing. And then the cliffhanger is identical. Um, And uh, actually, yeah. Now that I think about it, mm mm-hmm. Cliff, the, the ending is the beginning is almost identical and the ending is almost identical. But uh, instead of like I I had so much genuine fun watching this movie and that I I don't want to point the finger at it and say this is derivative derivative to the point of being insulting or p- plagiarism or something. No, no. But I I you know it uses the well worn tropes and I honestly think it uses them well. I think that mm-hmm. it um <clears throat> pardon me it uh. It, like I said before, it throws a fresh coat of paint onto these well-worn monster movie tropes and Western monster movie tropes. And I think that the fresh coat of paint really helps this one stand out. Yeah, you've seen it before, but it's just more of that fun that you like. It's right. just another it's another bite of a sandwich you love to eat from. Yeah, it's well, another monster but there's movie. still, an, like you said, there's enough new stuff thrown into this that even mm-hmm. with the familiar stuff, it's still different. Like, yeah, yes. we, we, this, the pic, like the one, the, the scene that I have in this screenshot here. Yeah. It, it's very much the skull Island helicopter fight. Oh, yeah. But what makes this one different is that they're carting around a giant church bell because they're trying to basically irritate him in the right direction. You know, they're trying to move him out of the, it's a theme park that he's, that he's stomping through. So they're trying to get him to move, but, and this was, and, and Nathan, you and I talked about this the other day. It's very, this is very much the Ashiro Honda approach where right. it's just a big, it's just a big thing. It is just a big thing mm-hmm. moving around the countryside and it's not intent. And you can, and, and right off the bat, you realize that this troll is not malicious. He's just really big mm-hmm. and really big yeah. things wreck things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. He, has, he has motivation. Um, it's an interesting combination of things because um, there's, gosh, I mean, this is this is way too like uh, 
esoteric to fully get into here. It's a little <laughs> bit beyond the. That's hence uh, welcome to how my brain works when I watch monster movies. Uh, it's it's a little perhaps a little bit beyond the purview of what we're going to talk about here. But the idea of there being really two approaches to a story like this: one, the Gojira approach, where you know how the monster was, you know, vaguely how the monster was brought into the world hydrogen bombs but his exact motivations for attacking tokyo and you know his his powers and all that stuff you don't it's not explained in the film and that makes him very very terrifying uh there's an element of the unknown a fear of the unknown that permeates the original godzilla that makes i think that's one of the unsung elements that makes that film so powerful Mm -hmm. is the fact that they don't explain why the monster is doing what it is doing it's beyond human understanding Mm -hmm. and then you have films that like the example i always go to is beast from from Twenty Thousand fathoms Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. yeah exactly beast from Twenty Thousand fathoms starts out with a direct quote-unquote directionless creature that is attacking new york and fishing boats in a lighthouse for who knows what reason and then eventually it's discovered that new york is where his nesting ground used to be millions of years ago and he's just going home and immediately you're a little bit less scared of the monster because now you understand him. You've opened the door for empathy. And I don't say that to compare it to Godzilla and say, well, one way is better than the other. I don't think that's true Mm -hmm. at all. Um, But I I say it to say that this film starts out with a kind of big thing moving around like Michael, like exactly what you said. It's big Mm -hmm. and it's going to knock stuff over. That's how it works. It's a, basically a walking mountain. And then you start Quite literally to, it's a walking mountain. Yeah, yeah. which, literally, it's which a actually mountain. does come from. And I, I, I'm going to share some notes on some Norwegian troll research. But yeah, that they're very closely connected to mountains. Yeah. But then you start to peel back the layers and you start to discover why this troll is doing what it's doing. You discover its motivation and and one a scene that actually legitimately like got me a little t- a little like misty eyed like you finally get a glimpse into his mind a little bit during one key moment toward the end of the film and uh, the empathy is just hits you like a waterfall at mm. that point and you suddenly sympathize empathize with this big this big old critter that's knocking stuff over you know now you get why he's doing what he's doing and it's proof positive that the gojira model and the beast model are both equally impactful when done right, but for two very different reasons. Right. Although I would argue there can be a little bit of nuance with those because I've seen some creature features where you do know the monster's motivation, but it's still terrifying. <laughs> oh no, that's that's there's it's not A or B, black and white. It's right. uh, there's a you said there's nuance there, mm-hmm. and um, it, it just depends on how you do it, how you tell the story, uh, and uh, it's if you do it well. And you do it in a unique way, or at least in a way that, like I said, with this one, throws a fresh coat of paint on it. You create a memorable monster movie, and mm-hmm. that's what this film did. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've ta- we've mentioned you know the visuals, and we've hinted at it. This having a lot of Godzilla twenty fourteen in it. We've mentioned Godzilla ninety eight. The twenty fourteen elements go back to our human characters, I would say, because our main character Nora who is the paleobiologist, so she's our scientist character. Now, this is different than 2014, where our main character was a soldier, but the still we still have the same sort of dynamics here. We have a child who grew up with someone who was involved in the scientific community, in this case, more specifically about monsters, and then a crazy thing happened. He went a little bit crazy, and now they're estranged because he's constantly talking about monsters and now they're reconnecting reconciling a little bit and then <laughs> dun, dun, and i dun. called this i'm like dad's not gonna make it and lo and behold almost the exact same you know time frame into this movie as in 2014 <laughs> the dad was, dies uh, i think it was 2014 was it like 40 it's like, it like 40 or 45 minutes? minutes this one's a little closer to 50 so you can make the him, argument yeah. that dad is in it is percentage wise is in this movie more because this is a shorter movie than 2014 it's about 30 minutes shorter Mm -hmm. but still the exact same thing happens and then it's all about nora after that just like it was all about ford brody and godzilla 2014 and the weird thing is i haven't heard the same debate over whether or not that was a good choice in this movie like i did with 2014 which really makes me wonder it's like were people just upset because 
it was Brian Cranston. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of reasons why people had that re- reaction and, and still do. And I think part of it, honestly, I'm going to, I don't think it's an exaggeration at all to say that part of it, not all of it, but part of it was Brian Cranston because people said, Oh, he's such a good actor and they wasted a good actor. So that was part of that. So there's, and if people went in with a kind of actor association expectation for him being in the movie, they weren't looking at a character fulfilling a role going through a story and then exiting at a dramatic moment. They were looking at the actor not being in a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's not the whole argument by any stretch. There's a lot yeah. of nuance and a lot of reasons why people either like or don't like that decision. But um, this film... A, we don't have an attachment, at least from the perspective of me. Uh, you know, I don't. I was not familiar with the actor who played no. the father character in this, so I didn't go in saying, "Oh man, they got this great actor from this amazing show." Who he, he takes home a pile of Emmys every year. Like the man's amazing, uh, and then they they killed him. Oh no! How could you do that to this great actor? I didn't have that. Um, maybe somebody in Norway did. You got any Nor- Norwegian listeners? Uh, Tune I... in and uh, let me let me know. You know, who knows? I I think I will argue that I believe this movie appreciate. I, I believe this movie allows me to appreciate the death of Brian Cranston in 2014 more Ooh. because they both because they both because they're both the same. Mm-hmm. Once the once the father in this movie fulfills his purpose, which his purpose was to prove one to prove trolls were real, and two to show a vulnerability or to show that the, to show that it's more a more of a noble beast than a monster. Mm-hmm. Same with and then in 2014, the dad's purpose was to one prove that something 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 funny's going on <laughs> yeah. uh, nice something <laughs> funny's going on over uh over, over in over in the facility and once he proved that then his purpose was fulfilled he was he was he was vindicated and then you could move on i would argue that Brian Cranston would serve no other purpose outside of that, outside of that. And I would, and I would argue that the dad and his and troll hunter doesn't really serve any other purpose other than to show that the troll is a noble, is a right. noble beast or a noble creature than just than, than a monster. And right. to serve as motivation for his daughter with whom he is reconnected. Right. Same thing with, uh, with 2014. And this is a slight, deviation from the path here but um uh, the guy the people who worked on um uh, on the 2014 film have gone on record as saying that yes there were versions of the script where they allowed brian cranston to live longer throughout different versions and at least one version where he lived through the whole thing and nothing they wrote felt right because he was just standing around or he he felt like a third wheel nothing they did felt as dramatic or as impactful or as memorable or as motivating for ford than killing him at the point they did so that's why they if made I'm, the decision well if i'm not mis- and i know we're not rehashing 2014 here that's not the no, purpose no, of this dream no. but 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 am i correct am i correct in i don't i don't remember this specifically where i heard this but am i correct and it was the in that it was brian cranston's idea to kill his character off oh i don't remember i don't know i've i've heard that i don't remember the answer to that i do not remember the answer to that i will i tell you what um i will look into that and i will let both of you know uh i would be curious actually because once yeah once we did i want to find out now because i I knew the answer point because it does feel like a very brian cranston thing to do because brian cranston gets very involved in Mm -hmm. his in his movies oh yeah he's uh look up any of the interviews he did for the godzilla 2014 he's like super enthusiastic he's like really Mm -hmm. into it uh he just he's just one of those guys who strikes me as he likes to act he likes to be in things yeah he likes to to, you know he he strikes me as one of those guys that just likes the challenge Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Michael, we just covered the Power Rangers 2017 movie, and if you mm-hmm. watch the making of documentary, he's yeah, he was he's, very he's... much talking back to people when he was doing like the ADR work and things like that. You know, you know, he, of... he was having at, he, when he played Zordon in the 2017 movie, he was actually having a really good time with it. Mm-hmm. If you watch the behind the scenes footage, he was having a very good time with it. But we could sit here and talk about yeah, the we could, wonderful we could, Brian Cranston the whole time, yeah, but. but I want to bring this up because we, you know, we, we've mentioned like there's a lot of parallels, it, you know, visually and otherwise with the monster verse. And then they just had to, I almost wonder if they did this as, you know, to troll us, 
because they literally have this <laughs> news in, yeah. montage of people around the world. <laughs> this jokes are going to be coming back a lot. Trust me. Where there are all these different people. Once the existence of the troll is made public because people are posting videos of it on the internet, especially after the <clears> scene that <throat> we just talked about here with the helicopters, one of them is a Japanese newscaster who says, could this be a Norwegian Godzilla? And I'm like, okay, at, at, now at you're point, really making me think you pitched this as a MonsterVerse movie. They told you no, but you decided to kind of go ahead and pretend that it could fit. <laughs> It's just you know, it's just an Easter egg. I, I would it. be okay with that. Listen, if if they made like okay, so while we were I was sitting here, this is kind of funny. So the three of us were watching this movie almost at the same almost, time. Almost yeah, almost at the same on time. On day 1 when it dropped on December 1st. I started it probably a half hour after you guys did. And um when I started getting text notifications from you guys, you know, Nate chimed in and said, secret monster verse film, same thing that's on the slide. <laughs> and I, as I was watching it, I was starting to see elements of that. And the only thing that that popped into my head was uh, me. And I'm not saying they're going to do this because they're not, this is just me being silly. Uh, so don't, don't take it the wrong way. But what if, legendary <clears throat> pulled a cloverfield and like adopted this film like they did with uh like the other the two quote unquote cloverfield movies that they kind of sucked under the umbrella of cloverfield and t- kind of did an anthology thing um they turned the cellar into 10 cloverfield lane which is awesome by the way that it is awesome it is uh, and then it's they the did best they, one yeah I, it's great it's great it might because be the it best doesn't one. really have that stupid looking monster in it Oh, oh man. Uh, wow. hot takes. <laughs> Oof. But the and then they did the same thing with um, Cloverfield Paradox and uh, such. Which and we they, don't talk about Paradox. <laughs> I enjoy it was dumb. I, I enjoyed, enjoyed Paradox I liked, for I what it was. It. Yeah, I but liked, anyway, I anyway. I, that's like imagine if they started doing that where every, people around the world in Norway, in um, you know, name a country that might want to make a monster movie based on something out of their folklore. Uh, and it's up to the standard of this one because but I'm going to, and again, I know we're probably going to touch on this again, but the visual effects in this film are Hollywood quality. They they're are surprisingly they are, good. I have they're to surprisingly say. good. They're yeah. Really I was I, pretty good. Yeah. Good. The, I was, uh, they have, they really use the land. They filmed this on location. <clears throat> this is not green yes. screen. They oh, no, filmed this real. on location and they I used felt a real troll. Yeah. They used a, yeah. yeah, a real troll. Um, yeah, definitely yeah. a real, real troll. troll. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah it feels you wouldn't real believe what the real. how they had to pay this guy. I mean, and <laughs> they they paid him in uh, Christians. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shame on you, Danny. I know. I know. I'm not endorsing it. <laughs> I'm just saying you, the trolls got to eat, man. Like, uh, it's Actually, horrible. it's worse according to the uh, according to what I read upon with trolls. They uh, they don't typically eat adults. They like children. Oh, see, now I have to take it back because that's that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the worst. That's not funny anymore. Uh, oh, but they would eat other things too. But well, eh. that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. that's fine. Then maybe we can say he was paid in goats or something. I yeah. like goats too, so that would be sad too. There's no way out of this. There's no he was way just out. hard to be on set with. Yeah, well, he would. Uh, he would. They uh, court, uh, uh, They yeah. would. They would also eat stones. Apparently, so. Yeah. I wish yeah. that I wish that this was not a live recording because I would totally make a joke right now. That <laughs> it would be incredibly inappropriate. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, uh, but anyway, but anyway, yeah. So anyway, you were saying talking about the special effects. Oh, the special effects are great. Uh, special effects look amazing. The location, uh, the locations are beautiful. The troll uh, himself looks really, really solid. Um, and I'm not just saying that because he's made out of rock. Hit the button anytime. I'm waiting. <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, the, it looks good. Like on a visual level, I think you could you could like make this a monster verse anthology movie. Now, imagine if. China did one of these or, you know, best of all, Japan did one or if like Spain, like pick a country, maybe Denmark will remake Reptilicus. We can hope, um, you know, and <laughs> that would yeah, make yeah. my friend Damon very happy. Yes, it would make me very happy. I love Reptilicus. It's ridiculous it's, and wonderful, uh, you know, p- pick and choose from around the world because there is a global aspect to the monster verse, right? There's this aspect of this monster is popping out of a mountain in this country. This, they're, they're widespread. They're all around the planet. Mm-hmm. So imagine if like if you were to adopt this into the monster verse I'm I'm seeing cuz they didn't know that this thing was here they had no clue but 
Mm. there's like because there would have been a monarch base built around it right so this is one they didn't have on their their radar or else they would have swooped in so they'd have to write that out now i'm not saying this from the perspective of yeah they're ever gonna even think to do this they're not it's not gonna happen uh but it's fun and if you honest to god if you squint turn your head sideways a little bit and use your imagination it's kind of like that one and i'm gonna i'm not gonna remember the name of it right now but it's a movie from Mm-hmm. either the, the 80s or 90s i don't recall with sean connery that people think is a secret james bond movie because it technically might fit into where he would have been at the time I... because he was like i don't remember the name but it's like it's, it's like not one of those never fa- say never again right no 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 it's not that it's a, it's a different movie um and i don't remember what it's called but he's playing a very similar character and he's uh he's locked up and the idea is that he he's he's bond but he's not you know like he's James Bond. James, yes, Bond. James, thank you. That now it's complete now. But uh, it's <laughs> obviously it's not. The movie was not made to be a Bond film, but it's like one of those fan, one of those fan theories that says, mm-hmm. well, these two movies are connected somehow. It's not real, but it's it's fun, right? You know, right? <laughs> I, I, well, like I said, the oh, I think you could have fit th- with just some minor tweaks. I think this could have easily have been a monster verse film. I almost wish it was a monster verse film, mm-hmm. but I'm okay with it not being a monster verse film. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it doesn't have to be a monster verse film. Like that's that's kind of a silly thing to have to tack on. It doesn't have to be part of a bigger universe. It doesn't no, it have doesn't. to be anything more than it is. It's it's fine. The not way everything ha- not everything has to be a part of the monster verse. Come on, not everything yeah. has to be a part of the monster verse. As, yeah. as much as I I live in hope that one day uh, Legendary will induct uh, 1999's Reptilian into the monster verse. <laughs> I know it's never going to happen. Uh, <laughs> and if they do. The littlest gatekeeper can't keep complaining about it. Oh boy! <laughs> but he'll find ways to complain about it. He'll find ways to complain. <laughs> he'll about find it. ways no, to it's, complain about it's it. It's great. I I think that it fits nicely, uh, mostly by virtue of the fact that it is uh, copying and pasting elements of the MonsterVerse. But it really does feel like all those original elements. It, it, this 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 monster could exist in the MonsterVerse. He absolutely could. He absolutely could. Right. So uh, I just have this question for you. Uh, uh, I have it defined here. Have you guys? Did you guys ever hear the term hyper nature before this movie? I never heard that term. I have yeah. never heard nope. of it. No, nope. Couldn't say as I, I have. So, well, I actually looked it up, and I did find some web uh, some websites that were defining it. Not the places you would normally expect to see that, like a like a Wikipedia or something like that. So. I don't know how reliable this website I got uh, where I found this is, but it says that hypernature is human design has made nature hypernatural. Hypernature is an exaggerated simulation of a nature that never existed. It's better than the real thing, a little bit prettier, slicker, and safer than the old kind. Hypernature is culture in disguise because that kept getting brought up all the time in this movie. That's why I had to I've look it up. I've never... I've never heard of that. This is a first for me, and right. I'm suddenly fascinated. Yeah, uh, I'm fa- but I, and I, but I think I understand where they're coming at with this because they're drawing so many parallels between this and folklore. So they're I, they're yeah. they're asking because that's kind of uh, the first scene of the movie is teenage Nora with her dad and they're mountain climbing and they're talking about fairy tales and trolls. And she says, oh, I don't believe in that silly stuff anymore, which becomes one of the themes of this movie. The, you know, the, the idea of, you know, how true, how real fairy tales are. It's a very common, you could almost say tropey theme that's in stories like this. But I think it, mm-hmm. it's used a lot because it makes sense. <laughs> For something as, and this is the thing about uh, the, the fact that they, they leaned I guess this is I guess it's a good time for me to bring up the the tone of the film because mm-hmm. the tone the tone it takes itself it, it doesn't take itself heart attack seriously it's it's not like that there but are a it lot takes of itself pretty seriously it does like it treats the like it treats the situation as serious there's some jokey moments mm-hmm. and I think they're well placed for the most part there's some there's some funny lines there's one particular character who's kind of the comic relief and he's good at what he does Oh, the um, guy who uh, who kept talking about his weirdo book ideas that I want to read. Yeah, 
Yes. And how and, and they, they're, they're, he works at a Norwegian government office and they all just casually do the Vulcan salute. And I'm like, yeah. I need to work here. I was gonna say, <laughs> this is my, my like people. Your, your dream job there, Nate. But uh, tracking monsters and uh, talking about books and doing the Vulcan salute. That's that's you could do it. That's my life but, right there. I need but, that. Yeah. The tone is it takes itself seriously. It treats the situation and all of the uh, the, the oddness that comes with troll folklore seriously, because it doesn't matter how bizarre it is that he doesn't like church bells. It doesn't matter that he, he, you know, he, he can smell the blood of believers. It doesn't like all that stuff is treated. It, it's bizarre and it's, it comes out of the folklore, but they treat it as ser- it, it's incredibly seriously because this thing is real and it doesn't matter how kooky you think the, the folklore is it's happening in front of you. And choosing a troll as the main character is interesting because trolls are very malleable, uh, widespread folkloric creatures. They a troll are. can be a troll can be a lot of different things, and this is not the fir- obviously this is not the first movie to deal with trolls because we have we mentioned we've been talking about oh, troll hunter a lot during the stream, but then you also have a completely unhinged nonsense like like the cult classic that is troll two <laughs> or, um, or the actual troll. I was like, there's the going to be a, like, can you imagine if they actually made a sequel to this and they called it troll two? Just I the, would the, hope the, so. But the internet would explode and not know what to do. One nil this. bog joke, one nil <laughs> yes. bog joke, Mister Roar. That's all I ask of you. Uh, because and, and I say all that to say that trolls, if not done properly are hard to take seriously. Um, James Rolfe said that in an episode of one of his movie reviews on Cinemassacre, uh, where he said, you can't take trolls seriously anymore. Just say it, just say the name out loud, troll, you know, you can't help but laugh a little bit. So he, he was making a joke about how troll two made it impossible for, uh, <laughs> for, tro- for trolls to ever be taken seriously again. And obviously he was kidding, but that's something that's, I hadn't really considered before because you find trolls in high fantasy novels and films. You find mm-hmm. trolls in, you know, they have a cave video, troll <laughs> video games and tabletop games. Uh, many, many years ago, I was on into, the internet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you have internet trolls because troll. Yeah. Trolls are also, that's a name that's been adopted to kind of, uh, you know, refer mm-hmm. to, somebody who will prank you or will try to make you look stupid or will just be a negative Nelly all the time. So again, Mm -hmm. you can't take the word troll seriously in certain circles, you know, I think that you can't take it seriously because trolls have had different manifestations throughout pop culture. Look, look, like you have, you have the troll dolls, these little silly things Mm -hmm. with the colorful Mm -hmm. hair and all that stuff, the little cute things, whatever with their belly buttons and whatnot. And um, then you have troll hunter, and then you have Troblins from Power Rangers. <laughs> yes, <And> like <laughs> yes. You'll, uh, Michael, you'll appreciate one of the ne- one of the next slides. Trust me on that. And then, you, and then you got cute stuff like you mentioned uh, the troll dolls, which are still a phenomenon all these years later. And then you've got stuff like Moomin. You ever heard of Moomin? Mm-mm. Look up, I've look heard up of Moomin, but look up Moomin. It's adorable. It's and that troll is a cute little you know character that you know lives in a little village and kind of looks like a hippo. Uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, the oh. trolls in Frozen. The yeah. trolls, in, yeah, yeah. There's, they're, they're all over the place. The trolls in, uh, I mean, they're, they're like we could go on and on and on and on. The point is mm-hmm. that there are a lot of different interpretations of trolls, and I, you know, I know that the the James Rolfe quote I just threw out there was, I know he was messing around, but I, you know, it, it's there's so many different interpretations that mm-hmm. it is a word you can take seriously depending on the interpretation. So I get that it was a joke. I, just, you know, I thought it was funny, but it's. It's something that when you hear the name, you hear, uh, 10 people in a room, if you say the name troll, you'll get 10 different thoughts popping into 10 different heads. And this film kind of leans into that a little bit with, you know, the minute the word troll falls out of the dad character's mouth, everyone in the room face palms. Giggles. Yeah. And yeah, they laugh. They yeah, laugh and they're because, like, oh, yeah. the are we going to have an eating contest with it? Oh, three billy goats gruff. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they even mentioned King Kong in, in yeah, one they, moment. They, um, they get Godzilla and King Kong name dropped in the same way. Like, they secret monster verse movie. <laughs> they had to. And it's, uh, they, they are fully acknowledging that, the the premise is a bit unusual silly the, it's, it's, it's silly. yes it's silly but at the same time uh this is not a silly creature and what it's doing is certainly not silly <laughs> and you have I, to take I it mean, seriously 
when you get to you know one of the when you get to one of those final scenes that you know I do want us to talk about here, but mm-hmm. it's interesting you bring that up because I did I, looking over my notes here, I wrote down three things that I felt like might be thematic statements for this movie because one was unbelievable doesn't mean impossible. This kind of I think also kind of plays into the whole our how real are fairy tales. Another mm-hmm. one, this is actually one of my favorite lines from the movie, which is, yeah, and in a crazy world, only the crazy are sane. I loved that line. <laughs> that, that, that was, was good. so good. <laughs> and let me see what was another one. That was, uh, you have to believe and uh, you have to believe it to be able to see it. That's an interesting spin on, you know, a bit of a cliche phrase. I, I like, like that. that. I uh-huh. like I like that a lot. So, you know, it like I said, it's really leaning into that, especially when it starts delving more into its personal mythology and we start finding out that, yeah, those fairy, those troll fairy tales, they're true, as Obi-Wan would say, from a certain point of view. And, <laughs> from a certain point of view. Yeah. Yes. So we find out that's, you know, we find those like, yeah, trolls, quote unquote, don't like Christians. And in some story, in a lot of stories, they would throw rocks from outside the town to hit the church bells when the bells were ringing. According to the folklore, it's because they hate Christians. We find out here it's actually because the bells make a noise that they just don't like. Physiologically, they don't like that noise. So they have mm. to silence it. So, you know, it's, you know, it's, so it's same, really yeah. playing around with some interesting stuff, but then nobody wants to believe that there's an actual troll because they're like, it's just a folklore. You know, it can't be real. But they also go to this woman because they're like, we think we found a giant monster. <laughs> yeah, we found some some footprints and we got this weird footage that definitely looks kind of troll-esque. And uh, you're the, I, I guess you were the first person that we could get a helicopter to that knows about very large living things. Yeah, oh, uh, and your yeah. dad. Because, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, th- that's the other thing is that there's a very good. Yeah, it's a trope. It's the same thing as in Godzilla 1998. Got to go get the worm guy. But the thing is, she is it's fully and well explained in this film why she would be considered by this government agency to be the best person to track down. She knows about prehistory. She's got a connection to, you know, somebody who knows about they know their trolls mm. and um, it's it, it works like the fact that they pulled her in uh, makes it makes sense. I, mm. I thought they explained it really well mm-hmm. and they, they really they thought about it. But thought it. Stand by listeners. We had a bit of a hiccup. Um, guys, guys, fellas, yeah, uh, you know, okay, this is just a troll. It's pretty great. <laughs> I, I actually lost internet signal there for a hot second, so. I don't know no. what you just said for the last 30 seconds. <laughs> well, it was really it was profound pro- it and was, brilliant. It was profound and beautiful. Moving on. Yeah. Michael cried. Beautiful. I <laughs> did. I cried. <laughs> it did, I hope it, I mean, did it record? Nope. I, it did not record. It was, it'll probably be on the video version, but not on my soundboard. <laughs> oh, well, you happy oh. editing, Nate. <laughs> just splice it in there. Uh, oh. Yeah. Good radio. Anyway, I'm done yammering about fairy tales. Uh, do we want to talk about the climax? We do. I do. I do. Because mm. we find out that the troll's motivation, and I kind of called it, you know, he's mourning. It sounded like he was mournful. The character said he sounds like he's mourning. Turns out he is. His, and this is connected to, it, apparently, actual Norwegian history. Uh, it's they, we find out that the troll's family was killed by the Christian king, St. Olaf thousand years ago when Norway was Christianized and the trolls were basically declared enemies of Christianity. So they killed a bunch of them and then built the palace on top of it because it was the mountain King. And in Norwegian culture, medieval Norwegian culture, anyway, it was considered good luck for you to, for a King to build his palace on top, on top of, of the palace that once belonged to the previous ruler. Mm-hmm. 
like you do. Mm -hmm. Like you do. And so there's a bunch of bones down there. You mentioned the bones a little bit earlier. They brought up the bones that were down there. So very much like the Kong's uh, Skull Island yes, graveyard. Again, also. Going, yeah. I was like, it's Skull Island all over again because now we, you know, it's the bones of you know his, you know his fellow Kongs. In this one case, it's the fellow trolls. So we're let. So he's the last of his kind. I think there's also some implication that there's familial connections with the bones down there. Yeah, like they're well. It was, it's kind of implied. Well, go ahead, Michael. I was just I was gonna say how did how did the story go that uh he was the last of his kind they trapped him they trapped him down there and they expected him just to starve and die but he didn't he ended up not starving mm-hmm. and dying like they expected mm-hmm. yeah he kind of went into suspended animation it's implied that all of the bones in there are part of like not just his clan but his family and even if they aren't his blood relatives the trolls blood relatives they are his clan and therefore and they are his family and so that mm-hmm. is really his family graveyard it's his species graveyard and during that they also mentioned that they they lured they lured him in there with an infant with an infant troll mm-hmm. um and once they said that i predicted the post credit stinger <laughs> but um, yeah yeah yeah, we'll yeah. get there. But um, yeah, we'll get yeah, there. The, the, the graveyard was amazing, and like you said earlier, Michael, that's where we find out that UV light kind of calcifies them and turns them into rock. Or artificial UV light, specifically. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. uh, which seems to work faster. Well, the implication is that it works faster than the sun, and then it turns out that's not quite true. No, uh, but which like, not- the actual ending is a little weird for me, but. So we we get the big revelation about that, and at this point, we're going full tail kaiju movie because now the trolls in a city, and it's actually he's in the city. He's not intentionally trashing the city; he does trash it at, over the course of the finale. But it's not like a Godzilla movie where he's there and just knocking over everything because that's what he do. So, mm-hmm. th- so they lure him there because he's trying to get to that palace, and then he finds out he, I guess he confirms for himself that he is the last of his kind and he kind of goes into a little bit of a rage and then they're trying to lure him away. They're trying to get him out of the city. And that's where we get what I think honestly might be the best sequence of the movie. The most memorable part of it, because it's the most unique where they have a troll skull in the mm-hmm. bed of a pickup truck and they are a troll racing. baby skull. By yeah. The way. And they are racing down these, because the city's been evacuated, so the, they're racing down the city street, and the troll is chasing it. You know, to to yeah. get back to get back to the skull, and then they're doing all these crazy, fast and furious maneuvers, getting around, <laughs> and then we that, but then it falls out on the bridge, and then the troll picks it up, and looks at it, and realizes he really is alone. And then he, at that point, he just wants to murder everybody. Apparently <laughs> the skull, the, there's a moment where the skull uh, is dropped from his hands and it shatters on the road. Yes. And at that point he just wails into the sky <laughs> and it's very genuinely sad. Um, you, you have to expect <clears throat> the tear to come out of his eye mm-hmm. at that point, because it's, um, It's what? Danny. We lost you. <laughs> he froze, Michael. What? Danny. Fr- there, Danny came back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was still moving. I just fine. It must be you. No, because Michael, have- was, Michael was fine. I, I can still see Michael doing stuff. Well, I knew that. But no. Well, anyway, that scene, the scene with the troll head is really sad. <laughs> it's the, the, it's really the troll sad. head scene is very sad. The, the 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 troll head scene is very sad. He picks up the skull. He looks at the skull. He realizes he is finally alone. He looks at his reflection in the uh, uh, in the building in the in the in the building, and it's really sad. I expected I expected to cry. I expected a tear from him, but I expected a tear from me as well. But mm-hmm. it just didn't happen. Yeah, I guess and I'm then a cold, now that I, cold bastard. And now cold that bad. I think about it, this this is another <laughs> Godzilla ninety eight connection, right? Chasing the car, chasing the car because the babies are dead. Yeah, that's a, that's a ninety eight. No, wow. I, I made note of that too. It's a thing. It's a thing. Wow, luring the creature to a park, aka Central Park, mm-hmm. over a bridge, over a bridge, over a bridge, over a bridge. Listen, the guy, 
Mr. Roar, again, I hope I can call you Mr. Roar, knows his Western monster movies. He mm -hmm. knows them well. He sat and watched um, these things. But here's the thing. I would argue that this actually has a very Japanese sort of ending. Because if actually, this was Godzilla 98, the military, because he does fight the military a couple of times, the, mm -hmm. the military would have killed him. And this one, no, it ends up being... Even when the military was making some progress against them, it's because they got help from the scientists. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, neither the scientists, really, or the military can claim the victory. No, um, he's it's he, the in the end. So I guess we should set this up. We should. Uh, so for anybody, first of all, if you haven't seen this movie and you're listening to this, uh, like for crying out loud, pause this and go <laughs> watch the movie. We're gonna spoil the end here in a sec, but they the bridge. You know, they go across the bridge and the troll follows them. And now he's he's completely enraged because he we're not quite sure if he thinks they killed the baby. It's doubtful. He's at least upset that they were trying to steal the the, the a part of a child troll. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, frankly, I'd chase that truck, too. Mm -hmm. And um, the plan is that they are luring him out of the city across the bridge into a field uh, where one of the uh, basically like the third main character who's a member of the Norwegian military, uh, he's a cool dude. Uh, he's got this operation set up where they have all of these UV uh, lights, mm -hmm. these that, that are situated yeah. almost, almost. You know what it reminded me of? The famous publicity image from Godzilla Fifty Four, where the uh, the tanks are lined Ooh, up in a circle. Yeah, yeah. That's, what it, that's what it reminded me of. I don't, I don't think that was intentional, but it reminded me of it um, a lot. Uh, in fact, and the idea is they're going to catch him in this, the middle of this circle. They're going to turn the lights on and they're going to turn into stone because the sun you know what has been kind of... very uncooperative throughout this whole film. I, it has... Is that a thing in Norway? Is this, there not a lot of, know. is there a lot of cloudy days in Norway? What do you think? There's so you, many you know trolls. What I should you ask my dad. Reminded... My dad's been to Norway. <laughs> what it kind of reminded me of was King Kong 76 mm -hmm. with all this, with the spotlights and the, uh, the Ooh. the crown and yeah mm. yeah that's a, a lot honestly more, yeah yeah it's a lot more tragic than that though yeah it is because what ultimately happens is they've got him trapped they turn the lights on the operation is a smashing success it could not have gone better and i almost hit way, the button <laughs> yeah you can you can hit the button <laughs> go ahead I, far be it for me to stop you from hitting the damn button but no the um the, the lights are turned on, it goes well, and then our lead character, suddenly it kind of clicks with her. And it's been trickling into her her experience throughout the film that she's starting to sympathize with the troll in the same way that the audience is starting to sympathize right. with the troll. And she realizes that this is not the way to do it. And yeah. it, starts to, it starts to feel like murder to her. Yeah, but then um, the ending is, like I said, it's just weird because she decides, no, we're not killing him. Turns Just off, like she no shuts one... down all the UV light trucks. It's Yeti. Then, it's the ending of Yeti. It is. Oh, good Lord, it is the end of Yeti. Oh, no. But then she goes Go up there. And, the she, and she's they like, go back to the you. mountains. Just well, We won't follow and you and all I that. Thought that's, I thought that's what was going to happen. I thought they were going to pull a Yeti and they were going to let the monster live and he was going to go back into the mountains and it was going to be sequel bait. But he would still get to live and the lessons would have the lesson would have been learned. And at that point, that's kind of what and that's why I think the ending of this movie is secretly brilliant is because it was setting it, it felt like it was setting up the defeat of the troll. And now the audience doesn't want the troll to die. And then the director decides to give us hope that maybe the troll isn't going to die. But <laughs> Mr. Roar. Snatch his hope away. <laughs> snatch his hope away because at that moment, for the first time in an hour and a half long movie and multiple days in the film, the clouds, the stubborn clouds decide to break. <laughs> Out comes the sun, and that's pretty much it for the troll. Here comes uh, yeah. That troll's dead. Oh, yeah. And I'm just sitting here thinking, did she know this did was no going realize, to happen? Did no one realize what time it was? Did Seriously? nobody look at the forecast? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm just like, no one realized what? it was like five o'clock in the morning. The sun was getting ready to come up and yeah. Which I mean, well, I can understand how Nora wouldn't. She had just spent most of the, uh, she just had one of the most harrowing nights of her life, dodging a troll and doing fast and furious driving and everything. <laughs> so I could understand Nor that she might've lost a bit of track of time, <laughs> but those military guys, 
Norwegian would, Drift. Yeah, who were just sitting. Yeah, Norwegian Drift. You know, Oslo Drift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Oslo Drift. There Oslo Drift. Who were just sitting there waiting for the troll to come. And nobody really? thought, why do we need these UV trucks? The sun's coming up. Because the ending of the movie wouldn't have been as dramatic. I know. It, it, it makes sense why. from an emotional standpoint. It's one it of those does, things that makes sense from works. an emotional standpoint. But if you think about yeah. it, it starts to fall apart a little bit logically. Yeah, but like that's that's yeah. why you don't think about it. Any you just movie don't, does. You just okay, go but, with it. Uh, okay, Michael, you can go on doing that. But Danny and I, on the other hand... <laughs> I was no, well, I'm willing to go with the ending. I like oh, no, I'm willing to go me. with the ending too. I am. Well, there it, you go. And that's it, what's but, important. Yeah. I, it's that's just one of those things like, hold on. Be, it's your show. Because it, it's because I started <laughs> questioning Nora's motivation there. I'm like, was she trying to save the troll? Or was she buying time because the sun was going to work faster? No, you know? think, that's a stretch. I think I you're, I yeah. think you're stretching. Sir. I know, I know no. I am, but it was just, these were just the thoughts that came to my head because no. I was like you, Danny. I no. thought we were, we really were going to go with the, the, your, you know, the, thoughts, the Yeti ending. Your, Yes. Your thoughts are wrong, as always. Um, uh, uh, sure, Michael, but, and you're man. wrong too sometimes. <laughs> Gentlemen, please, please, please. Yeah, but uh, anyway, you're both pretty, I know. But yeah, yes, uh, this is true. Well, but, uh, no, that's true. But anyway, yeah. So that so that was our ending, and then they make some jokes about it because now we have a new mountain, a tiny. Well, it's not even a mountain; it's a hill. We have this new hill, hill now. Hill. In the, um, in yeah, because the they said, I guess we won't be having the World Cup next year, will we? <laughs> Yeah, that that's dangerously close to quite the urban renewal program they got going on. Oh, good lord! It's dangerously close. That was offensive, though. So <laughs> this yeah. was not. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then they, uh, I think they said something about they were going to name it after her dad. You know, yes. they made a joke about Which that. I thought, I thought that was sweet, and it was a, a little bittersweet moment. They got a laugh out of it, but it was more of a we're really sad. And again, the ending is so similar to, to Godzilla 1998. And again, I mentioned it before. The last part of the troll the to heartbeat. calcify is his eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the only thing they didn't have was the heartbeat. There was no heartbeat. But oh, um, no, they had a little bit of a heartbeat. Oh, was it? Sure. Oh, then I yeah, didn't there was hear a heartbeat. That. Yeah, there was a heartbeat. It just wasn't as pro- like it wasn't as pronounced as Godzilla is as it is in Godzilla ninety eight. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, there's my heartbeat impression. For I was going to say, I, uh, I may have to sample that and use it in the podcast later. <laughs> <laughs> Just let just let me know. My, my voice pops up a lot in, in that show, which is what we'll uh, be talking about in the Patreon exclusive yes, portion. Yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, yeah. So they they start cracking jokes, and it's it starts. It it feels a lot like because the the ending of Godzilla ninety eight has that same sad, and then it transitions into somewhat bittersweet, and then almost immediately into yay, the monster's dead, and that doesn't quite happen here. But there's still a very which is celebratory offensive. thing. And uh, it even ends with one of the characters reaffirming that they've quit a job, uh, just yeah. like in 1998. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be a writer. <laughs> I'm going to be a writer. Um, go play a lot of Call of Duty. Um, <laughs> okay. The Call of Duty joke earlier was kind of, was funny yeah, with was the military good. guy. His he's like, he's like how do you know how to use a gun? Do you have military experience? Yeah, Call of Duty. <laughs> that was it was a cute moment. That, that Before, was funny. Yeah, I'm going to bounce back. I'm going to bounce back a sec because it'd be remiss. I'd be, it'd be yeah. I would feel bad. I can English and make English words with my face. I can do this. I promise. <laughs> the scene where he actually quits earlier in the film and he slams his card down dramatically on the table, leaves, heads for the door, realizes he can't get out of the door of the boardroom without the card, doubles back, and awkwardly grabs it, and then leaves was perfect. <laughs> it was so funny. It was so funny. It was one of those those great moments in your head where you're like i hate this job and i'm gonna quit and it's gonna be dramatic and perfect and i'm gonna slam the door on the way out and everyone's gonna be like dang he meant business and then you mess it up (laughs) um it's i thought it was uh that actor he he his timing was so good he walks back to the table the same speed he walked away from it and something about it just just tickled me i thought it was funny um but yeah yeah, i wanted to give him a shout out now we will fast forward back to the ending yeah because the movie's not quite over yet yeah yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. So so then we yeah, we have the quick little wrap up and then someone asks Nora is like, "Hey, do you think there are any more?" as if they're going to go find them and Of course and there are. Of course Duh. there are more. And that because the, the and I'm like, "Oh, there's sequel baiting." Wait a few se- uh, wait a little bit into the credits to get to the mid credits scene because every movie has a mid credits scene. Thank you, Marvel. And then we get the Godzilla 98 style 
Oh, Dude, is there something in forever. under the Wakanda rocks forever in the cave? Did not have a mid <laughs> oh, did I think Wakanda Forever did not have a, a mid credit scene. See, I, I haven't seen it yet. So, I haven't um, either. But anyway, and then yeah. we hear some grunting, some growling, and then we hear a big roar, and the rocks fly up, and then the the credits start in earnest. I'm glad they did that. They had to. So my question to you guys: You know what? You know what that track is, don't you, Danny? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's um. Oh my gosh! Now that I'm trying to say it, the name just evaporated out of my brain. It's one of my favorite pieces of music, classical music ever. Is that the? Is that the Mad King? Is that what the? Is that the name of this? Why? Oh my gosh! I was about to name drop it. I think it's Nutcracker, actually. Nutcracker, you're no, you fool. <laughs> well, I almost said Night on Bald Mountain, and that's not right. It's Lair of the <laughs> Which Mountain. Which would have been appropriate it's for this Lair movie. of the Mountain yeah. King. Just, that's like, Lair, actually, yes. they, they, yeah, that is very appropriate for this. Yep, movie. it's it just popped back in my head. I love that piece of music. Um, and I always, it's it's one of those things like I I tend to associate it with monster movies. Weirdly enough, even though it doesn't really, it, I it's. I don't hear it that often, but um, I love that piece of music and I'm glad, glad a, that my brain decided to turn back on and I remembered it and B that they used it because it's, yeah, it's a little on the nose, but who cares? It's perfect. This is right. literally about a mountain King and uh, yeah, the tease is great. Um, and if you were paying attention to the, the dialogue earlier, you knew you kind of knew it was coming because they mentioned that they lured the King because the troll in this movie is the is the, the, troll king they used an infant to lure him underground so what happened to the baby that yeah. has to be the baby it's probably not a baby anymore right i also baby i also read an article because you know how there's a reference to the uh, to 13 drunk trolls it's supposed to be a another fairy tale another piece of norwegian folklore i looked that up and the uh, this article actually argued that it could be possible that that was brought up because those 13 other trolls or somewhere wow. so they could use those more, in a sequel are 14 more trolls somewhere only one of them sober yeah interesting yeah well okay. the, the story the, the the story in a nutshell is that the the th these 13 trolls went to a troll wedding they all got really drunk forgot to hide themselves before the sun came up they turned to stone and then they became mountains there you go there you go. Well, maybe they are. Uh, maybe they're just sleeping in the mountain, waiting mm -hmm. for the third film. Which uh, is uh, which is what we. This is how that. That's how this movie started. The troll wakes up inside of a mountain. Because yeah. people thought mm -hmm. like the mountain came to life and started moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question to you guys is: Do you want a sequel? Sure. My, yeah. Why not? They, they, if they no, make it, I'll not? watch it. Should There's there no be a sequel? Should there be okay. Yeah. Well. I mean, I don't know if that does anything need a sequel, you know, like, it's, True. It's, you know what I mean? Does, I, should there be, or do, do, would it be fun if there was one, you know, mm -hmm. it's, I, yeah, but here's the, the, here, go ahead, Michael. What would, what would they do with this? What would they do? So here's the problem I have with them, with them doing a sequel. What could you do with it outside of, outside of the outside? What they could do is where this troll was a little bit more of a, um, he was a gentle soul. He was a gentle King like the next one that comes is out for blood. And that's what they could literally call it. Troll two out for blood. <laughs> that, that's that's Norwegian a little too that. Z grade. I think for this out for out for Christian blood. There we go. Oh, <laughs> no. oh good Lord. man. So like, honestly, there are, I think there are plenty of things they could do. Um, and I'm not going to approach this from the perspective of, I want them to do this because I don't want them to do anything. I'll watch whatever they make, but I'm just kind of throwing ideas against a wall here. What if now that they know that, uh, the trolls are a thing <gasps> and there's a possibility that they're out there they go hunting for them. They go. So, wait, for so them. troll, there's so troll, the sequel to this is troll hunter. <laughs> Well, the, the sequel to this no. is the sequel to this is uh, Godzilla: King of the Monsters. Now there's a team that goes out and finds trolls before they become a problem, and uh, you know they basically they have to they have to they have a, a task squad. They have like an Ultraman Science Patrol team. You have the people who are inventing UV weapons to shoot the troll and calcify parts of its body so it can't move. Mm -hmm. You have um, you know the the folklore expert that will tell you, oh, aim for that part; it's the weak spot. Or here's the mm -hmm. go get that bell and, and ring it really loud, and he'll ah, he won't like it. And then you have 
all these different experts and you have kind of like a little troll monarch thing going on uh, where you have, a, I mean, it's the easy, it's low hanging. And, 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 then in, or, and then or, in movie three, they build a mecha troll to fight the 13 or, drunk trolls that wake what up. If, yes. What if, <laughs> what, if, what if troll two is Jurassic park Two: the lost world where they go or the Norwegian government goes hunting for this troll or goes hunting for trolls and now our main cast returns and they have to play environmentalist and, and free the trolls. Oh, they're going to exploit the trolls. Either They're, they're, they're going to exploit them, the trolls. They're going to gorgo them and put them on display or more believably, <laughs> they're going to dig out other trolls. They're going to, that's it. They're going to hire a bunch of folklore experts to figure out where to follow the tales, where other trolls might be hiding according to the stories. Maybe there's one buried under this mountain and this task squad thinks they're doing it to protect people. But what the government's really doing is they're trying to build an army of trolls. <laughs> an uh, army, the military. Troll army. They're going to militarize the trolls. They're going to, I, I listen, this is, <laughs> okay. no, what was, what in, way, this sounds like, the, this sounds like that. Norway, jo- they're going to make Norway the superpower in the west yes. well i mean they had they kind of sort of had nukes in this which was a little <laughs> weird <laughs> no it was a I, little weird yeah so here's what happens um time travelers from the future come back in time <laughs> to uh i didn't bit, know norway the possessed troll because, a nuclear weapon but okay, okay. Eventually, Norway becomes so powerful that it starts buying other continents, <laughs> and uh, the, the, the future Norway has to send a giant three-headed troll back to present Norway. There are three-headed to, trolls. <laughs> there are three-headed troll. Actually, you know what this troll kind of reminded me of? Um, this is off topic slightly, but the uh, some of the animatronic trolls that were in the Maelstrom ride at Epcot in Disney World. Oh yeah, I never rode that ride. Unfortunately, uh, it was I, I never got to see it, but I I love the designs for that thing, and that's what this kind of reminded me of. Uh, but yeah, you know what? There's, you know, mecha trolls, three headed trolls, <laughs> um, you know, uh, troll versus mecha troll, troll, <laughs> troll versus, I don't know. Troll to puss. Uh, <laughs> oh, good Lord. Uh, troll, troll to puss. <laughs> Spare me. Um, you know, like, th- listen, they could, they could devolve this and I'm using devolve in air quotes. this into a complete schlocky thing and make a hundred of them, you know, or they could take their time and they could make a sequel that, you know, builds on like the, literally the idea that I just sat here and came up with in two seconds, mm-hmm. uh, roar, if you're listening and mm-hmm. I know you are, uh, you know, call me, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work on this together. Well, like, I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm saying, I mean, uh, I'm going to share a little bit of you know, uh, some things I found out about troll myths. I mean, there's a lot of interesting folklore they could pull from. Oh, there's tons of folklore. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, just a whole bunch. But the, to let everybody know that it's the, the word troll is actually really interesting because nobody knows where it came from. Mm. In, in the actual original mythology, a lot of it is from Norse mythology. It's used very interchangeably to mean fiend or demon werewolf giant you know they think it might come from a proto-germanic word you know which is trollen i hope i said that right but nobody knows where it came from yeah the sullen trollen yeah trollen Mm -hmm. trollen now it it says some of the first written examples of this come from the prose edda from the 13th century which from, I haven't delved into this a whole lot. Maybe you can help me with this, Danny. But uh, the Prose Edda is a big source for Norse mythology, from what mm-hmm. I remember. So it it's would what, be the pro. It would be the Prosetta Stone. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, nice job. <laughs> Uh, listen, if you want to, if you want to tickle my funny bone, you combine my love of ancient prose with puns, and, uh, <laughs> ancient history with puns. And we well done, sir. Cooking. Well done. That was well that done. Was, I'm yeah. going to say this, but I'm going to lock this in since we're on stream. Um, that is the most appropriately used the rim shot has ever been. When <laughs> I, think been so. I think was, so. I think so. I think Michael correct. just won the internet trolls and all right there. I think he did. But, uh, but anyway, did. Uh, this was in this book, there was an encounter between a scald Bragi Bod. Bo- Bodison? I hope I said that right. I'm butchering all these Nordic names. Yes, you are. <laughs> and an Badly. unnamed troll woman. And I actually mm. found the passage in a couple of the websites that actually, you know, it's the actual lines because it's written. Trolley galore. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> they all can't be winners, guys. Yeah, no, no they can't. No, they can't. But the, if you're boy. and if you're familiar with Norse mythology, you might have heard of the the Jotun. Those are giants. Hmm. The Jotun. The, the Jotun. Jotun. Yep. Jotun. Yep. Uh, or or there's also Jotun? the pur- yeah. Jotun. There's also the Purs, which are hostile monsters. The Risi, who are heroic beings. The, the, all of it's very interconnected. Ups. And some theorize that those four distinct classes of beings, uh, while other... Oh, let's see. Some theorize that they're four distinct classes of beings, while I think they're all the same, which I think is kind of interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's cool stuff. Like, I... I love folkloric stuff like this. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Stuff. And, love uh, but this is the part where I said, Michael, you'll appreciate this because there's also different types of trolls. And I found out that our, our, our friend from mystic force, Phineas, <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Troublins are real. <laughs> there is so such a thing. Just ma- they didn't make they, it up. I they thought they made it, it up. It up. That's just fascinating. It, they, okay. I, they did not. It is not made up. There are several varieties of trolls, and Troblin is one of them. There's also Trogers. I, Trogers. I, I swear, I am not making this up. Like these sound like made up words that you know people come up with now. Trogers and Troblins are actually real, and as you would expect, the Trogers are supposed to be like they're the big ogre looking troll ones. and ogres. Yeah, they're, yeah, hey, they're now. the big troll. They're star. the big ogre looking ones. Now it didn't say Troblins were <laughs> were gob- <laughs> related to goblins like in Power Rangers, but I I have to think that you know there's enough similarity with the language there that they that they might be, but where, I believe it. Where, where does your research come down on Moblins from Zelda? I I have I I, I didn't find anything <laughs> about Moblins. I'm pretty sure they made that one up. <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah, the, I'm pretty sure that they did. So, oh, yeah. and they actually said Trogers were called Jotun. In Norwegian folk tales, and then Troblins is what one of the sources I looked at said the, about Troblins. They are considered to be Scandinavian trolls that have bigger personalities than their size. Although they prefer to be isolated, they are assumed to have so, uh, to be uh, to have been social within their communities and form families too. They empty. Oh, they enjoy stirring up trouble for humans, especially on Christmas Eve. This is funny. Tiny Troblins in oh, uh, tiny Troblins in Trolls Norse mythology has that they break into houses on the eve of Christmas and cause messes by throwing parties. <laughs> so, excluding that last bullet point, they're cats. <laughs> Read that list uh, again hey and tell me they're not cats. Read the list again. <laughs> uh, they uh, they have bigger personalities than size. They prefer yes. to be isolated. Uh-huh. They they are assumed to form to be social within communities and form families. Mm-hmm. They enjoy stirring up trouble for humans, yep. especially on Christmas Eve, and they'll throw mm-hmm. parties and make messes. Okay, that last bit not so much, but almost everything else there. That's a cat. That's what cats <laughs> do. That's, that's a cat thing. Yep. Just, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you might want to make sure your cats aren't troublins in disguise. Yeah, that's, they are. Yeah, they're, they, they just they're, might. They're, I promised I wouldn't curse on stream. So, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There are there also humanoid trolls called Holder folk. Holder folk. Holder folk. Holder folk. Yeah, that was they hard are, to say without uh, accidentally slipping up. I know. Uh, they, according to my source quote, they are magical Holder folk. They are magical forest creatures who look a lot like humans, except for a tail. They're thought to be. That that is a dead giveaway. Yeah. They are thought to be very beautiful and seductive, especially Holdress, Holdress, the females. Holdress could supposedly enchant men with their song and then make them do whatever they wanted. Sometimes Mm. they would just keep them around as pets. End quote. So they sound like sirens from Greek. They mythology. do sound like sirens. We call those cougars. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. they also, it also sounds like something that the fan art community should never find out exists. Let's so, hope uh, not. The but then the, here's the interesting thing. You want to talk about? We always talk about in the kaiju community how kaiju are essentially walking, living natural disasters, especially in the Japanese tradition. According to folklore, 
It was believed that forest and mountain trolls were capable of creating hurricanes and causing avalanches because of their connection to nature. Wow, that's very, uh, that is very kaiju-esque. It's, it's very, very interesting, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. It is fascinating. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. fascinating. Mm-hmm. And Anyone? then I, yes, I found, I did find. Yes, very much, just quite. Mm-hmm. Yes, very yes, much. Quite. So. And then very I found good. a handful of famous trolls. This is not the full list of the ones that I found. And some of these I did not know about. Some of them I question the validity of them being trolls. But if we're wanting a sequel to this movie, here's some stuff to pull from, I would say. So first off, I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger so I can actually read these. I can stream, guys. But uh, you have uh, you have Dover Good- Goobin? Dover Goobin? Dover Guden? Dover Guben. Dover Guden. Yeah, he was a. We're turning tr- Scottish. I don't yeah, think it does Scottish. sound a little bit. <laughs> Dover Guben. Yeah, it like, does. Dover Guben. Yeah, but he was a Dover. troll king, so maybe Dover Guben was actually our troll in this movie. Maybe that was him. Yeah, maybe it was him. Maybe. He was maybe identified. Was Dover Yo, they found him in the Dover Mountains. That, this, yeah, that's what I'm maybe saying. Maybe that was him. Yeah. Maybe that was him. Yeah, maybe, so he yeah, was. Maybe he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he was identified. Roar, are you listening? I got questions, Roar. Please. Mm-hmm. So he was identified by, as a character by a guy named Henry Ibsen uh, mm-hmm. in a, the Peer Gint poem that in 1867. Oh, uh, uh, Lorem's brother. <laughs> Hit the button. <laughs> did, not that button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He didn't just... No, he didn't deserve the sad trumpet okay, for that fine. one. There. Oh, thank you. The, <laughs> there you, we go. But, but, a, but, I, I but you do appreciate that, Danny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, but I'm it. it says that Dover Gubin was known for being narrow-minded and self-righteous, so I don't know if that qualifies. I don't know. So it's Nathan. Uh, oh, th- with, Dover Nathan. With, uh, with Dover friends Nathan. like you, who needs Thrax? Anyway. Oh, wow. <sighs> Jeepers. Them's yeah. fighting words there, my yeah, I know, oh, exactly. Words. Exactly. And actually... Fighting words. Yeah, and actually, you know, we're talking about the Holdras. We said that they would have a tail. It was the tail of a cow. Moo. Oh. Moo. Uh, moo, I suppose. Mm. Yes. Moo. Yes, yeah, quite. Moo. Very much. Yep. Then there was also a troll character named Nokin? Nokin? Nokin Boots? Nokin Boots. <laughs> Every one of these, a pun for every one. Yeah, we yeah. Can- <laughs> so it's all, I, all, all I really found about her was that she was supposed to be shrewd and could lure. Here's one for you, Michael, because you just played a similar character on the podcast a few weeks, uh, last month. <laughs> it was said that Nokin uh, Nokin would lure people into water and drown them. So no, it's like, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> Mr. Marchand. <laughs> that voice, man. I love it. I love it, too. So, so I read that. I'm like, so he's a Norwegian coppa. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I dig it. I bet it'll pitch you right on the... Right on the goobin. <laughs> we'll leave that one up to you, folks, at home. Uh, <laughs> figure out what part that is uh, yeah but here's the one that I, I i have to as someone who loves this poem it's one of my favorite pieces of literature i don't know how much i agree with this but it makes sense grendel from beowulf a troll you know okay you know maybe because what is grendel if like grendel is just grendel mm-hmm. you know like he's just kind of himself you could you could throw I'm going to count it because you can kind of throw a lot of different yeah. mythical creature names or folkloric creature names at Grendel and say, yeah, he could be a troll. He could be a goblin. He could be a demon. He could be an ogre. He could be, you know, something. Yeah. He could be, um, and I guess it would depend on how you define demon as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I'm thinking, not really thinking about this, but Grendel, I don't know. To me, Grendel's always just kind of been Grendel. He's just kind of his own, his own jam. He's his own, his own thing. But, since you can Grindle, apply the Grindle. name troll to so many different kinds of things, maybe, sure. you know, why not? Yeah. And then some of the other ones that I found. So after Grendel, then there was, I've never heard of this one, Dunker. Dunker. I, it's supposed yeah. to be a troll <laughs> mentioned in the a folk tale from that. Fosin. That's what it says. Now, mm, here's Dunker one Dunker. that I know is near and dear to both of your hearts. Yo. The Emir. 
Yes. Emir. The Emir, which is a Jotun, which, and it's supposed to be the largest creature in Norse mythology. Which is a delicious beer uh, <laughs> from... Uh, oh, Oh shoot! Dragon dagger, dragon dagger. Yeah, cool. Uh, cool Ridge. It's Cool Ridge Brewing. Uh, anyway, so sorry. there you go. No, there's the MIFE censorship. Yeah, thanks. That's great. We're uh, really Jack, Jack, Jack. missing that. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. here's the interesting thing. Yeah. It's uh, for what I read. Most troll names are not known because, according to folklore, if you know a troll's name, you can kill it. <laughs> Ooh. Well, yeah. that would cut. That would says, cut. maybe yeah. that's why we didn't know. We'd, maybe that's why we didn't but, know that the troll in the movie had a name. Yeah, but specifically, it says a Christian can kill a troll if they say its name aloud. Wow. Oh, okay. So it says they wow. might be dumb creatures, but nobody is that dumb. <laughs> Come, thou here, foul beast. <laughs> Yo, I hereby name the and let me let me get you and let me punch you in the grindle. <laughs> I hereby name the Tim. Tim. <laughs> uh, at least one Monty, Monty Python reference. Yes. Gotta, it's, it's, it's kind of a rule. Do it. It's kind of a rule. Kind but a I, rule. I just think that I just found that kind of interesting. There's a lot of there was a lot of interesting things that the now that I actually look at both this and Troll Hunter, it does make a little bit more sense. But uh, I mentioned the thing about the 13 trolls. I wanted to share a few more details about that. So I said not only did they become mountains, the Turn the Stones eventually became mountains as centuries went by. It also said that their hearts were snow clad and their bones were made of ice and according to my source, quote, so their destruction was only possible if they came in direct contact with the sunlight. Obviously, then their snowy hearts and icy bones would be melted. That is why they preferred staying in the darkness. Whenever they came into contact with direct sunlight, their body started to perish. And we talked about that already. So basically, the snow caps on mountains were the frozen hearts of trolls. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That is interesting. Actually, that's, it's legitimately interesting. That's really, that's really, really cool. It it really kind of paints them in a in a not just a mythical light, but in a an elemental light. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because you have these very earthy creatures. A lot of times they're described as being like you know the walking mountain thing. We've touched on that. Mm-hmm. Just very much like that. And now you're bringing in ice. That's kind of interesting. You know, like mm-hmm. ice and snow. Ah, troll. That's the thing about trolls is that they're so interesting once you. You so, peel back once you peel back the layers. Oh wait, no, that's so ogres the, and onions. Never so mind. would the White Walkers be trolls? I don't know enough about Game of Thrones to comment. I honestly do not either. Um, I thought I they were more I'm like zombies, they, but I don't well, know. they do. They do. They. I. Uh, they are. They do have zombies. Yes, they can. They can reanimate things. But I'm. Th- I'm thinking specifically of of the of the, of the king. I'm wondering if if I the White Walkers are trolls. I'm wondering. I mean, I I think the argument could be made for that, but one other thing is trolls are traditionally supposed to be these big dumb brutes. So they basically said if you ever got caught by a troll, they're 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 vicious. They're even cunning, but you can outwit them. <laughs> that was part of the you know, part of the folklore tradition because a lot of times they would be used by parents to kind of scare the kids. You know, into behaving. It's like, hey, beha- you know, do what I say, or a troll's gonna come and eat you. But then, if you got oh, caught yeah. by a troll, if you were clever, you could outwit the troll pretty easily. Which is where they made reference to it: the boy who had a eating contest with a troll. Basically, what to put it succinctly, he was a farm boy who was taking care of the farm one day when there aren't weren't any adults around. Some trolls came by and they were gonna take all the food. And he basically just kept doing wagers with the troll to keep him from stealing everything all the way up to the point where he said he could out eat the troll. And when the troll was eating food and thought he couldn't eat anymore, the boy convinced the troll to actually cut a hole in his own stomach to eat more food. <laughs> As you do. And so the troll actually went through with that. The troll died, and then the boy took all of the troll's gold and basic, you know, and saved his farm. So just, well, there you go. What? Trolls, not the brightest creature in your folklore book. Yeah, which is, again, 
this actually goes a little bit counter to that. In this, the trolls are the victims. It reverses that. I think it's it's one of those, you know, history is written by the winners sort of a mindset, mm. I think, where it's turning it on its ear and saying, like, yeah, all those stories were told to vilify the trolls. They're not really the bad guys. They're the victims here, which is an interesting thing, whereas Troll Hunter leans hard into the trolls are irredeemably evil. <laughs> yeah, they, they gotta go. <laughs> they gotta, gotta go. go. Gotta go, yeah. gotta go, gotta go right now. You gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Yeah. Yeah. So gotta I'm actually go, glad go. that we talked about this movie and I did this preliminary research because I think this will be good to have going into Troll Hunter next season. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, mm-hmm. you know, so hopefully troll hunter will make a little bit more sense and i'm going to be i'm planning on doing some different research for troll hunter but i'm still would like to have this in my back pocket but one last yeah, we, thing i'm not no i'm continuing your thoughts well there is one last thing i wanted to share with everybody which is there are actually some landmarks in norway that are connected to trolls which is what this picture is right here that is called the trolls tongue there are worse body parts they could have picked. <laughs> okay. You so, made it and not Michael, which is a little surprising. I, I was trying to do it before he did, and I got it. I'm very proud of myself. My family's proud of me, too, obviously. Um, you won an award? <laughs> so, okay, so tell us the story of the troll's tongue. tongue. Which yes. is a uh, basically an outcropping from a cliff because uh, you can't see the picture for the li- you know, for those who are listening right here and the picture it's here has had- graphic you do not want to see this picture yeah I know. It's- <laughs> yeah or- one girthy mountainside yeah it is a very girthy mountainside but anyway oh, uh, it's no. the troll's tongue or the troll tunga so it's a rock formation it's 3600 feet above sea level and it's over t- it says it's over 10,000 years o- over 10,000 years old and it's 2300 feet above lake I don't know if I want to try for this. Ring, ring, uh, ring, ed. I'm going to do it a syllable at a time. Ring, ed, ring, ed, ring, ed, no, that's ring, no way. Ring, a ding, dong. I don't know. Ring, a dong. I'm not going to. Ring, ding, 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 Oh, oh my god! Anyway, anyway, anyway dang, dang, dang. here's the thing. It's interesting that you bring that up because the legend is that this rock formation came about because a troll was too was so confident that he couldn't turn into stone when exposed to the sun. That well, unfortunately, he did. <laughs> So he did he climb up to the top of a hill and just like do a raspberry at the sun, just like, <laughs> and then it caught him mid raspberry. <laughs> you know what? Is? I'm going with that head cannon right now. <laughs> yeah, just and then the, the sun was like, ha ha, screw you, troll, and uh, turned turned him into rock tongue first. That's, <laughs> That was not a smart troll. Uh, no, trolls are. We've already established trolls are not very this smart. This was the Gene Simmons of trolls. Simmons <laughs> of trolls. Yes. Uh, I how, many more tongue, how many more tongue jokes can we make, you guys, <laughs> before it starts to uh, oh. wander into. Uh, uh, like, oh, I got one more. I got one oh, more. Oh, I got oh, one oh more. really? I got one more. Now, damn it. I got one more. <laughs> I want to rock and troll all night <laughs> and party every day. <laughs> It's a troublin because troublins will on Christmas Eve they go and have parties in your house and make a mess. <laughs> oh, children! Um. <laughs> I now need a troublin kiss tribute band, but they only perform on Christmas Eve. You need all I heard there was I need a troublin kiss. I'm like, oh, okay. That's what I, I didn't heard. know you were into that, Mark. Hey, hey, have you seen Phineas? I mean, I'm just saying. 
<laughs> and next slide. No, oh, no. Anyway, well, we got to finish this. Okay. Slide. I know we do. Woo. We do. But anyway, there's also the trolled timed turn. Troll peaks. Troll peaks. Well done. You nailed it. Yeah, troll peaks. <laughs> Wow, there's going to be a show about this, right? <laughs> it's Troll Peaks. <laughs> it's Twin Peaks, but with trolls. Yes. I'd watch it. I, I would I'd watch too. it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and just like we talked about with those 13 trolls, it's believed that those came about because a bunch of trolls turned to stone in the sunlight, and that's where the big crags and everything came from. So apparently all the mountains in Norway used to be trolls. <laughs> I was going to say, that's what I'm getting from this. Every mountain is suspect at this point. Like, is there, is is there any land formation in this country that wasn't alive? once? There you go. That's how we end this trilogy. We, it turns out that someone has figured out how to awaken all of the mountains in Norway that are are in fact trolls. It's a troll apocalypse. The tr- it's troll pocket. Tro- yeah, it's, it's tro- <laughs> tro- so the tro- topography. topography. The 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 topography. Turned back into a troll and just help. Yep, yeah, just right back. <laughs> just ate the person. That would get all the that that would get all the people that like vor porn. Oh, oh god. Anyway, we're moving on. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. Remember that time we recorded this stream, you guys? That was yeah, we yeah uh, we did, <laughs> we did. So anyway, I'm just leaving a little space here for uh, just to do some concluding thoughts, some closing thoughts, and then we'll move into the Patreon exclusive section. You so, leave space for other people to talk. Bless. Lies and wow. Slander. I Lies know, and, right? Lies and slander. I, Lies know, and slander. I, I, I love letting you a-holes talk. I'm just saying. Ooh. I'll see it when I believe Ooh. it. <laughs> Get it? Because the, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, you know what, Nate, since you're obviously sacrificing so much to allow us to speak uh, right now, why don't you offer your final thoughts prior to us offering our final thoughts? Um, and you go right ahead. Well, like you I said, right the, like I said, this turned out to be a more interesting of a movie than I was expecting. And I feel very educated by it because I am really surprised that I've not heard a lot of this folklore because, you know, you would expect, even as Americans, you know, we're so inundated with Western folklore and mythology that we would just know about this, but clearly we're not. I feel like there's a lot of untapped potential here and a lot of interesting stuff, and I'm just scratching the surface with this presentation. So, I you know, keep going, troll, <laughs> Mr. Roar. We, I want to see more. I, I do, too. I do, too. Um I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Like I got, I don't have anything like deeply philosophical to throw on this. I just, this is a good fun trope tastic. It is yes. trope tastic. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but it, it, it repaints the tropes in a cultural, uh, new coat of cultural paint in the same way that Japan painted the monster movie genre with their own cultural coat of paint and created kaiju films. I feel like this does kind of a similar thing with Norwegian, uh, folklore and mythology and obviously while borrowing from all the, the you know Hollywood and even a little bit of Japanese uh, storytelling and monster movie tropes I think it takes all of that stuff again you've seen this movie before this movie has been made several dozen times but the fresh coat of paint on it makes it really like I said fresh it makes it, it it's just fun to watch and there's there are a lot of unique fun things about it it's not all tropes it's not all you know, uh, cliches. It's not, um, there's a lot of interesting stuff in it. It goes through the motions, but it's so fun to watch those motions be gone through that. Uh, I, this is a movie I will rewatch. Uh, this is a movie that if Netflix, uh, deems the world worthy of having a physical copy of it, I know they don't like doing that anymore. Netflix, but if you put this out on Blu-ray, it's a day one purchase for me. Mm-hmm. I will buy a copy of this movie. Um, I'd love to hear a director's commentary, uh, on I, this film. I, I think that'd well. be, little feature ad or something, but at least a commentary. But yeah, I, this, this movie gave me the warm hug that I love from monster movies. This movie reminded me, and I'm, I mean, I'm literally surrounded in 
reasons why I love monster movies, but this is one of those things. I sat down and watched it and I just got a, I just got such a thrill out of it. I was like, this is the stuff I just love. I, you know, it's, it's not incredibly deep necessarily. I don't require that from my films and it's not stupid. You know, it's a smart film. It's well put together. It's just so much fun. It's just a monster movie. That's fun to watch. And you know, that's, that's that's enough, you know. It's 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 great. So congratulations to the people who made this. Congratulations to the directors and the writers. And for also, it's worth mentioning that right now this thing at, at the time of this recording is killing it on Netflix. It is killing it on Netflix. It is one of their top viewed films currently. It's up there with Wednesday right now. Again, really? we're dating this episode. Oh yeah, Wednesday's the number one. But in terms of movies, this is like one of the biggest movies that's currently on the streamer. That's uh, it's impressive not, because it's not making no, it's not making Wednesday numbers. Wednesday is out of control, huge, but it's still ranking in the top. Well, but along still, with that, that's impressive because it's not attached to a franchise. Wednesday nope. is. Oh yeah, yeah. Wednesday had name recognition. It had uh, the Tim Burton name, which is a big draw. And people have been waiting for Burton to do the Adams Family for years, so people were super into that. I haven't seen it yet. I, I, I might, I might check that out, but. Uh, when this dropped, I mean, you know, I, I don't often do day one streaming release views. Um, this is the, one of the first ones I've done in a while. I did not want to wait mm-hmm. for this. I was super on board with it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to see more like this. I hope it inspires other filmmakers around the world to make movies like this about their own folklore. I hope it inspires Netflix to throw money at more productions like this. Uh, I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And also... Um, Nilbog is goblin spelled backwards. Yes. Yes. I just wanted to make uh, troll sure everybody that. Troll right, two. Troll yes, two. That, that needs to be in the sequel. <laughs> that needs to be in the sequel. Mr. Hamilton, you have the floor. Oh, can I speak now? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I, I really did like this movie. I think it's fun. I really didn't know what to expect. But now because of this presentation and Nathan's very enlightening uh uh, research skills that I totally don't exploit on the power <laughs> um, the, 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 I know a little you bit do more. all the editing so it's only fair <laughs> I uh, I um, I know a little bit more about trolls now mm-hmm. and not just the internet ones oh yeah well the internet ones are the worst ones <laughs> we don't like those they don't make movies about those on Netflix uh, no well, although that, do, that would be know. funny <laughs> that would be funny but in all seriousness in all seriousness i really did enjoy this movie this movie like you said danny is very tropastic like there's not a ton in this movie that surprised me there's a there's a, but there is a lot in this movie that i actually like because it ta- it picks and chooses its tropes well mm-hmm. i agree i would agree with so, you as well i wish i hope they make a sequel i really do all right i do too yeah yeah i'd watch it I would watch it if for no other reason than because I need material for my podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, there aren't, there aren't nearly enough monster movies. This thing you got to keep that thing going until twenty thirty four at, at least. this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've the seen point. the plans. I know how far out you have it. Plotted. I know I'm insane, but yeah. Well, you said it, not me. Yeah, I know. So. Well, but well, but hey, like this movie told us, in a, in a you know in a crazy world, the crazy are sane. So mm. profound, my friend. Very very profound. Mm-hmm. Which means we're the sane ones, and everyone else is crazy. Oh, Michael, I, I could have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but before we go to the Patreon exclusive portion, I yield the floor to you guys to do some shameless self promotion because shameless that's how we do things around here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go first because Danny takes forever. Um, oh, <laughs> he's not wrong. Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, kaijuramanmedia.com issue seven just came out digitally we ordered issues we ordered physical copies of issue six and seven so those should be coming in soon uh my co-host uh nathan marchan and i just wrapped up the power trip with our po- with our grand finale episode that we recorded last night so uh if at the time of the, at the time this probably comes out Dino Fury will probably be out. It's still in progress. Uh, But I don't know about the ranking and the finale yet. Probably not. Uh, I don't know when you're releasing this, Nate. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to pretty quick. I think, yeah, I'm going to assume it's in, it's going to be within the next day or three. So Dino Fury should be out by then, but the rep, but we're coming to the end of the power trip. Uh, We're going to be starting and then we're going to go on a little sabbatical. 
Uh, and then we're going to come back. We'll do some Sentai. Mr. Danny Boy Damana will be coming on and talking about Die Ranger. Well, very uh, excited about that. <laughs> very, very excited to have you, sir. Die Ranger. Very, very excited. <laughs> Die Ninja, Die Ninja. Okay, You're conflating anyway. theme songs. Um, I know, I know. He I know. knows what he's doing. Die Ninja, da, Die Ninja. That's a really terrible. Anyway, okay, so I think it's it. Um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'm, I, uh, I co host some YouTube things with my friends at Monsters and with Attitude sometimes. Uh, they're a bunch of they're a bunch of good dudes. So if you like toys, uh, adult toys that are kaiju themed, <laughs> then um, then then check out Monsters with Attitude. Um, uh, but outside of that, everything you can find me on is at kaiju the Roman media dot com. You have, have to type to, it with oh, an accent. Yeah, you have to type, when you're typing it into the browser. You got to type in <laughs> kaiju. RomanMedia.com. <laughs> All right, I yield the floor He's to Danny Scottish. Boy. I yield. I yield the floor. I yield the floor to Danny Boy, Dandy Man Damana. There we go. Because. All right, everyone, let's do this right quick. You got um, to do it in the accent the whole time too. <laughs> yeah. So, basically, what I am is I write, and I write a lot. I write a lot of Godzilla stuff. I write the Godzilla movies as uh, as books, basically. I'm the purveyor of the Godzilla novelization project, and that's... Um, A beautiful project, yes, it is. Oh, thank you, man. That's so nice of you. Oh, I could just go on and on about how nice you are, but I've got plugging to do, so basically, <laughs> what I've got to do, I'm going to run through this. So, if you like reading Godzilla movies as books, I'm writing them. They're free to read at GodzillaNovelizationProject.com. You can follow along on Twitter. I've got Danzilla93 underscore GNP. I've got a Facebook page. I've got a Patreon. If you want to throw money at my stupid face <laughs> so I can research stuff and write books faster, you can go ahead and do that. I host a podcast on there. It's all right. <laughs> I'm up to almost episode 50 on that one. It's pretty great. And then, of course, there's also emailing me. Godzilla Novelization Project. It's uh, gmail.com. Very long name. Very sorry about the sore fingers. And uh, you can also read stuff I write. I see you laughing. I see you la- You're not going to make me crack. It's not going to happen because I'm not looking at you. So I write for Kaiju Ramen Magazine and Media as well. I write for a few other places. I've on a lot of live streams. I'm on a lot of... Uh, Nate has me on his show all the time. All the time. He's got me on all the time. I'm doing voice acting. I'm hosting episodes. As you can tell, the emphysema is starting to set in a bit. (laughs) I should probably... I'm... Go away now. (laughs) There we go. I did it. I did it. I did it. You actually got it done faster. Michael, we need to encourage more accents. (laughs) Yes, we have to encourage more accents because he has to get it done faster. (laughs) Go away, though. (laughs) So, are we doing the bloody Patreon Uh, show? We we will in a second. I do want to remind everybody, since all the other podcasts got mentioned, go check out Henshin Men there. We're we're done now. Who gives a bloody flying about (laughs) Henshin Men? (laughs) <laughs> delayed reaction syndrome strikes strikes our good friend <laughs> yeah, yes apparently all righty so. well with Travis, that if you're listening i'm sorry buddy <laughs> who <laughs> i didn't care. travis oh. travis okay <laughs> if, tra- if travis is listening i said i was sorry oh, for okay. saying that about henshin men ah jeez right i uh I, it's my podcast <laughs> now apparently so it's because you just <laughs> steal things from other people um <laughs> If by Hostile steal bank, you mean uh-huh. dropped into my lap, then sure. But anyway, well, you know, children. if I drop dead tomorrow, you are not allowed to do the power trip ever. Wow. Don't joke about that, Michael. I'd miss the power trip. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny, would you? I no. have to ask, since we are on air and since we are live and this probably won't get cut out. Yeah. Danny, would you would you venture to guess? that the power trip is indeed Nathan's most popular podcast. Oh, it's, it's not even a question. 
Like, there's no way it's not, right? I mean, in terms of numbers and sheer entertainment value, it is feedback. uh, You realize uh, you realize he is vicariously inflating his his own ego by doing this. I know exactly what he's doing. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, we're moving on to the Patreon portion. Thank you for listening. Join MIFE Max on Patreon. Thank you for listening to the Monster Island Film Vault, a podcast produced and hosted by Nate Marchand. If you want to join the discussion and be heard on the show, we'd love to hear from you. So email us at feedback at monsterislandfilmvault.com. Our website is monsterislandfilmvault.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Monster Island Film Vault. And on Twitter, where our handle is at the Monster Isla One. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, Spotify, and TikTok. Follow Jimmy from NASA on Twitter at NASA Jimmy and our many other colorful characters using the links in the show notes. The podcast logo was created by Tyler Souls from TylerDrawsComics.com. Our theme song is Wanderer on the Offensive, live edit by B33J, Serax, Juan Madrano, and Nonsensical Lexus, which is a remix of Counterattack, Battle with the Colossus, and the Opened Way, Battle with the Colossus, by Koatani from the video game Shadow of the Colossus. All film and audio clips belong to their respective copyright holders, and no infringement is intended or implied. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and or Podchaser to spread the word about the show. You can also support us by joining MIFV Max on Patreon. The Monster Island Film Vault is a Moonlighting Ninjas Media production. Sayonara! <laughs>